Hello, 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 hello. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let us go, guys. How are we? How are we doing? Are we? Sh are we running? Are we running, chat? Wait. We're running, huh? Are we running? Because I don't see the the thing on the dashboard here. So we're probably running. Okay, guys, I gotta join the Sagar uh, on the call. One moment. Oh, the dashboard is not showing. Wait. Oh, yeah, now it's showing. Okay, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna talk candidates. We're gonna do. Um, Advertisement time for my uh, epic chessable course. Epic chessable course, guys. Not chessable, sorry. I always have chessable course. I've said epic chessable courses is what we usually do. But uh, we have a course with um, Sagar Shah. Uh, one moment, guys. So complicated. I need to. Um, I need to. One moment. Get on the call with Sagar, sir. Mm. Oh, the link is not here. Oh, it's here. Here. Join the Zoom call. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Sagar used to use a ghostwriter. Guys, uh, we <laughs> we have recorded. Uh, wait, we have recorded uh, together. There's no ghost. We are not. There are no ghosts in there. There's only writers. Um, it's it's recorded. Sagar also uh, helped me get the. Uh, there are also files. I think he also helped. Like the the files are also there. But Sagar helped me with the files to do to make it. But uh, I mostly did the recording with him. Uh, let's see. Trying to join the call. We are talking about all uh, openings there on that course. But uh, let me first uh, join the call. Hello, sir. Hello, Anish. How are you doing? Anish, can you switch? Oh, no, you cannot switch on your camera. No, no, I can, I can. But you are on your stream. So uh, I can give you another camera, worst case. Oh, oh, pro streamer. Why are you so happy, sir? It's going to be a very bad camera. Uh, guys, if you want to watch me in HD, you have to go to my channel, exclusive. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> get some, you get some trash cameras, I got. Oh, it's actually pretty good. Okay, the, the trash Whoa, camera is pretty good. Oh, in the house, guys. Yeah. This is the man, sir. I think hmm. the one which we used to record the chess-based course Oof. is on your stream. No, no, yes. the one which we use for a chess-based course is too good. It's now hiding. What, you are not using it at uh, all? No. no, no, only for special occasions because it's it's in the middle of the room, remember? I like my table uh, attached to the wall and everything. I mean, my okay. wife likes my table I attached thought, to the wall. I thought you will be using it so nicely because you won your title Tuesday using it. True, now you true, 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 true. But it's... Uh, it's a little... I like the aesthetics are better like this. And the normal camera is fine, good enough. But for special occasion, for courses, I will do the uh, epic camera you gave me for sure. You know, you know, Anisha, I've been uh, sort of in touch with you through messages and all, but I'm seeing you in person after a long time. It feels like. What do you mean, Sagar? We like did a bunch of uh, streams, no? You didn't come on the last one. We did such a big one. So we, I was there. You are, sir. You are completely out. You are sleeping. I was so there. I was you, building you toilet. You came in this terrible phone. You made this toilet. No, no. I was on this toilet. Looked, building toilet. Come on. Yeah. You, you look now like as calm. You know, we have one hour. So uh -huh. feeling good now. Sir, one second. I have to uh, see how do I get you. Um, oh, I am seeing your. Okay, okay, okay. Can I sir, see your a, camera? Sir, there is a tweet by Hans Niemann. It seems. Uh, can. Uh, I don't know. Twitter game, you are the expert. So. 
uh, sir, can do you know uh, if I can see you? If I can put your camera on my, I don't see you have your camera, yeah, or what? You don't have the camera, or how? Did, did I not start on Zoom? I don't think so. On Zoom, there is a virtual camera. You can see yourself and me. You just put that; it's there for everyone. But you are very small there, yeah. Ah, yes. I can make myself bigger like this. Yeah, that's better. Okay, wait. Now let me try to. So Ooh. then you can make ah, uh, but then you can't have that exclusive content on your channel. No? Exactly. I want to have uh, on my channel high high definition. Guys, go and subscribe to AG's channel. Get him to 200k. AG, where? No, are no, you? no, Sa Sagar, you are completely out. I am long past 200k. You are. You need to get some sleep, sir. You are completely out. I saw this reel with you and the rook. I mean, you are just uh, completely gone. So you need to get some sleep, have some breakfast. I thought you were at 196. No, no, I'm already a long time cross 200k, sir. Come on, you know me. If I need to cross, I cross, yeah. Oh my um, god. Wait, uh, it's a window capture, yeah, I think. Wait, I should yes. put the sorry, sorry. I should put the studio mode because I know this myself. I'll ruin something oh, again. Oh, studio mode is like going yeah, yeah, pro, it's a pro, sir. It's pro. a pro, sir. Yeah. Window capture, I think. 202k wow how did you gain 6k subscribe by streaming title tuesday yes no 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 i farmed yes. levy <laughs> 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 i just farmed levy but it's fine it's fine he liked it um let me see Zoom. but to get 6k subscribers without streaming much is like epic epic once art says please upload all variations of queen's gambit by once g See, I'm going to show you this. Uh, Anish, I was just before you entered, mm -hmm. I was showing them our course. Are and you I will showing, also yeah? show you because you will also have not seen the final product. So that's true. That's true. Let me let me. But also sir, it's dangerous for me to watch my own course because it's for noobs. What if I become a noob myself after watching <laughs> it? <laughs> okay, I got you. Now your head is also there. Oh, even your logo is there, sir. You, wherever you go, your logo comes along, yeah? Such a pro, marketing. <laughs> By the way, I finished the podcast with uh, Danny Ranch. My God, he's such a machine. Today you did a podcast? No, no, I listened. I listened to your podcast with Danny Ranch. Ah. I finished it. Oh, how did you like it, sir? Yeah, amazing, amazing. But sometimes he starts talking about this corporate stuff. He's such a pro. I have a feeling that he's like, he talks on autopilot. I have a feeling that he's sleeping and talking at the same time. He gives this giant speech about how they are, uh, you know, like the whole thing is like all like it's epic. How they are, especially when it comes to his vision, it's already so much on his, you know, it's an autopilot. Yeah, community building. And yeah, so yeah, the whole vision thing with uh, we want chess.com to be the place, the best place to work and uh, how we are there. All, you know, our uh, all our employees are happy and the whole we have the vision. And this is like so smooth. I mean... Uh, Total, total machine, Danny Ranch. So good. So good. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but it was nice. And yesterday I also interviewed no, he's uh, a pro. Lee Chess, Lee Chess uh, uh, CEO. Oh, really? Thibault? Thibault, yes. yeah? No, not Thibault is the co is the founder, uh -huh. but CEO, like the operation ah, officer. Okay. What's his name? He's like maybe one of the top guys. What's his, his name? Theo. Theo is his name. Oh, I know Theo. him. Is he CEO? No. Yes, yes. He's yes. CEO. Wasn't yes. he just a lawyer? Yes, but now he's the operations officer of uh, Leeches. Oh, they promoted him because he just was their lawyer, no? No, no, now he's full time. I knew him as just a lawyer of Chess. Of, yeah, yeah, he's uh, a lawyer. But oh, he now got, I think he got promoted. I, don't, I didn't know that thing, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's been quite some time. Mm. He came here, he's, he travels to many tournaments. Mm. And so we talked about many things. Uh, so now it, it was like... Uh, of course, Chesscom, but there's also Lee Chess interview, and so people get to know all the stories. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. No, but my what I like about you know Danny Danny Ranch's uh, podcast because uh, you know people who are visionary basically what it is they basically see the future. Yeah, that's the point. Mm -hmm. And they they predict the future. That's what they do. And he is one of those people who is able to. Uh, given the information he has, he is trying to predict the future. And, he's and a now, step ahead. sir, ev everyone thinks and he thinks that documentaries are the future 
of content. Well, it's and quite clear, yeah. But he's basing it, of course, on. Uh, I mean, it's it, because you know he sees what's happening in the world, and then he he tries to do that in chess, and that's very logical. I was always saying, for example, this drive to survive in Formula One. Yes, this is yes, just yes. the way you, to go. You had told me as well. Yes, it's the way to go. It was clear to me too. But he also has the resources to make it happen. Like, you know, I, for example, I can also think something, but I don't have any resources. But he has got this big company with uh, employees and the contacts and the money and everything. Um, I mean, I don't have the money. I first need to sell my courses. Yeah, then I'll... But... So talking about your courses, let's, let's talk about it very quickly because we have to discuss about candidates. What is this? No, oh, I just chess. saw a pen on my table. It's Chessify pen. It's so beautiful. I just realized it. So it's a little commercial of Chessify here also. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You have to promote your course here. You are promoting Chessify. No, but Chessify helped me make my course always. <laughs> they are the... For noobs. <laughs> For noobs. Yeah, yeah. Sir, are we going to first promote the course or talk about... Let's just give... Um, talk a little bit about my friendship with Gukesh, sir. I always told you, no, that Gukesh is the one. Remember, I always told you he's the one, right? <laughs> yes, you always used to say he's the younger Youngest. one by few yes. years. Yes, sir. So that's why exactly. you make a difference. And I was exactly. Saying, but how can one year or one and a half year make such a huge? And difference? then what did I say? And you said you will see. Exactly, is what I said. <laughs> now, sir, what I am seeing now with Gukesh is exactly what I saw with Prague a year ago. This age of 17 to 18, it's a crucial age. You know, sir, that all this stuff's 18 years old. You know, it's a milestone, right? Uh, seven years old, big milestone in, in many different cultures. For example, in um, uh, Orthodox culture, the um, Orthodox uh, religion, yeah? From seven years old, uh, when you go to church, uh, this is when you start uh, confessing to your sins. Because you become, uh, like, conscious, right? When you are 17. Seven, seven, no, seven. 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 Oh, seven. When uh, also, for example, um, when in Russia, when you go to school, uh, at seven is when you start going to school. In Holland, uh, at seven you go to the third grade. This is when you start learning uh, reading and um, writing and letters and everything and numbers and uh, uh, summing, uh, addition, subtraction. All you start learning at seven. So this is not an accident. You can see with people at seven something happens to them. Big, big uh, breakthrough. From six to seven, this one year is huge. 17 to 18, that's a huge year, sir. It's not an accident, accident. Everything is 18 plus, 18 plus, why 18 plus? Because from 17 to 18, something happens to you. And that happens the same uh, to chess players. And I kid you not, I played really? Prague. I played Prague in the Champions Chess Tour from 17 to 18. I played him throughout the tour, the start of the tour and the end of the tour. I played like three, four matches with him. Every match I play him, I see Three months happen in between, I see it's different players playing. There is evolution. He's better every time, significantly stronger, like a different player. And we so see the same very, with Gukesh. Uh, I think, Anish, you are very serious about what you are saying, the 17 to 18. Yes. This is like, I thought it was started as a joke, like, you know, 17 is 18 must also be nice, 16 must, be, but like now you are very much focused on this 17 to 18. No, of course. This, I'm, I'm telling you that this whole, this. This number, like 7 or 18, like there, uh, 21 also is a number, yeah, in many countries. Because you can, start, in some countries, you start driving for 21 or like uh, drinking 21, like taking conscious decisions. Like these numbers, they're not there by accident. Um, and uh, this is the reason uh, why you see the same with Gukesh. I've seen him play um, at the start of when he's 17 years old. And now, uh, every few months, you see him play. He's becoming stronger and stronger and stronger just by just with every every month. And, um, you know, if he qualifies now, as I always said, my favorite prodigy, <laughs> my best friend, Gukesh Domaraj. For, for a few months, not right. What do you mean? <laughs> like when you both were uh, to competing together, you know, for the top spot in FIDE circuit. So. No, of course. Uh, yes, of course, of course, of course. But, you know, you, sometimes you have to compete with your friends. Like, you know, I played that yes, much. But I, did it. I think I, I completely agree with you that when you were sort of when Gukesh was around 2600, around that uh, range in 2021, you still were, were sp speaking very highly of him right from CSL when he was in your team. Of course. King Slayers. Yes, yes. Uh, and now, do you do you see him in this tournament to be playing at a very high level? Yes, of course. Is what I mean. He's shown a very universal chess. He uh, defended slightly worse position with Caruana. Extremely, extremely accurate. Yes. Eh? yes. Extremely accurate. He uh, on demand beat an outsider with black. Something he didn't manage to do even in London. 
just a few months mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. He played this 2400 guy, he couldn't come yes. close. Today, yesterday was a completely different story. He played like a machine the whole, uh, more or less. There was some inaccuracy one moment. But after that, he recomposed himself, found this G5 idea, and again managed to, uh, managed to win. So uh, he's done it in all sorts of different ways. He's evolving, yeah? He's playing uh, tactical chess, positional chess, everything. And he's getting also, better by, by month. are very rounded, right? He's, yeah. getting, he's getting around gradually. He's gradually getting... He was not rounded at all. But gradually, he's uh, like he had major, uh, he probably still has major gaps in his understanding. You know, some of his games, like against me, for example, uh, the game in uh, Vikante this year, there was some, you know, clearly uh, very immature decisions were made there in that game. Uh, but uh, he's growing, you know, by uh, like uh, in front of our eyes. And uh, he's the, you know, the, the only Indian contender right now uh, yes. to win this. Uh, this tournament and um, this this is yeah. very important question i want to ask you anish who do you think because you know there are all the people talking about this but you have played the candidates you know what the pressure is like and you know who is the favorite here also i'm going to put up the next round's pairings here so that we have an idea so these are the pairings of the 13th and 14th round which are left uh, what is your feeling? Do you think Hikaru? Do you think Nepo? Do you think Gukesh? Or do you think Fabi has an outside chance considering he is now flowing? Sort I of. think Fabi's chances are much better than uh, people would uh, expect. Fabi is very much, uh, very much on the menu. He's got this last round shot, right? He's got the last round shot. He has to play Nepo, yes. Yes, yes. Um, and... You have to understand. So let's see the pairings, Sagar. Show us, show us the pairings. We have to understand a few things. I want to talk to you about the pairings. A few important things. Show us the pairings. Let, Let me run point. through a few important pairings. So no matter what, no matter what, in the last round, Fabiano uh, is... Uh, if Fabiano is not going to win the next game, which is probably not happening. So, so look, Prague already lost the chances, right? Yes. Although, wait... Um, there is no, a scenario. Prague can you show us the standing once again? Okay, Prague can Prague score two out of two. Six points. Six points. Now, then seven and a half. Yeah. I will definitely reach eight and a half. One of them. Yeah. So Prague is out. Prague has no chance. So that means that uh, Prague is not going to. And you know, okay, there is money at stake. Yeah. Three and a half thousand euro per. For every half point. Yes. So huh. if you score two out of two, you are winning fourteen thousand dollars. Yes. 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 Yes, but it, what I mean is draw is also three and a half thousand. So what I mean is Prague has no incentive to um, so just to burn himself, right, uh, and just lose. So Prague is going to play normal. When Prague plays normal with White, um, he is not likely to lose. Yeah. So uh, Fabi is most likely to make a draw. Also, his game with Gukesh was uh, a draw with Black. He didn't get chance. So most likely that game is a draw. Uh, Nepo against Sicaro. Nepo, he has this coasting mode thing very often. And when he's in a coasting mode, he cannot play for a win. Now he might get a little bit tilted seeing that others caught him, but I think he won't. So I, most likely that game is also a draw. Yeah, so let's assume that these two games are drawn, okay? Let's assume it. So Nepo goes to 8, Hikaru goes to 8, yes. and Fabi goes seven to 7.5. Seven let's put Gukesh uh, on hold for now. Let's put the question hot. So uh, let's look at the last round situation um, in that case. So mm -hmm. Fabi Nepo is a must win for Fabi, right? Yes. That's an and he case. is white. He's he is white. white. So and if Fabi uh, wins that game, Hikaru, uh, let's put then, Gukesh on then, a. Then Fabi yes. goes ahead of Nepo because Nepo is yes. on eight. Yes. Fabi goes to eight and a half. Yes, but Hikaru, if yeah. Hikaru draws two games will be shared then with Fabi in that yes. scenario. Eight and a half. Yes. Now, uh, you have to understand. So if Gukesh is going to make a draw in the round 13, then um, let's say all the relevant games are drawn in round 13. Let's imagine that. Then we have a very clear situation for last round. We have Hikaru playing Gukesh and Fabi playing Nepo. Fabi in the must win. Hikaru uh, playing Gukesh with white, very pragmatic Hikaru. As usual, no real big uh, opening ideas. Never had Hikaru, never big, uh, never with white. With white, never anything huge. Gukesh solid, Berlin, uh, he can play. Berlin he plays. 
uh, Hikaru never anything like he he pl- he can play some position but nothing revolutionary ever. He likes to play uh, some also, position. Also, also uh, Gukesh cannot play very solid. Yeah, like he goes knight g seven. No, no, no. He will. Gukesh will play for this game. Will play yeah, solid. Yeah, yeah. So. Berlin, Berlin. I guess Hikaru is fine. No, no. Hikaru uh, will basically go for draw. That's clear to me in that situation because ah. Hikaru wants a rapid tie break. Got it. Right. Hikaru wants a rapid tie break. Hikaru will go for a draw and will hope that Nepo doesn't win with black. Mm. Which is possible, of course, because Fabi might overpress. So Hikaru maybe will play a little bit, but it's hard to play a little bit, yeah? I mean, you play Gukesh, yeah? you don't play, uh, uh, you know, your uncle or something, yeah? You play Gukesh, so it's not so easy. So uh, what we are expecting, what, what we have to realize is actually then, if Gukesh uh, makes a draw in round 13, he will probably get an easy game in round 14 and get the tiebreak. But the problem for Gukesh is he doesn't want the tiebreak, maybe. Also, Gukesh with white against Firuja, I think he will go all out. No? Mm, may, I think basically Gukesh's decision should be, does he mind the tiebreak? Because if he gets a draw with Alireza, most likely there will be a tiebreak. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Yes. So this is the decision now. Unless, unless Karuana beats Prague. Yeah, but then anyway, tiebreak most likely. No, but then Karuana but, but then also Ka- then beats Nepal. No, no, then no, 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 no. If, if Fabi already beats Prague, he'll be so thrilled. He will make a draw with Nepal, just uh, somehow. With white. With yeah, white. somehow. Not uh, not from you, start. You feel, so my question is, you feel all the players, if they have the tiebreak easily in hand, they go for it rather than going for the sole first position. N- not all, not all. Uh, those who are chasing always dream of tiebreak. That's a, that's a famous psychological that's thing. That's what uh, Fa- Fabi said yesterday. Also, yes. if I get a tiebreak, I'll be very happy. Exactly. So Fabi wants a tiebreak. Hikaru was chasing throughout the whole tournament. He wants the tiebreak. He also is a good and rapid blitz. Nepo has been lead. He has, Nepo he has been leading. So he's a little bit tilted, and the one who was bleeding doesn't want the tiebreak usually. But he has black with Fabi, so nobody asks him what he wants. He just has to survive. Uh, Guki, Guki basically wants to win the white game against Alireza, regardless. That's clear. He wants to win the next game. But not, not at all cost. He will not burn all the bridges. So if Guki beats Alireza, last round Hikaru has to beat him. Yes. Yes, which which is possible, right? Like Hikaru with white can, can yeah, yeah. really press. Yeah, that would be uh, uh, epic. So if we have, we could have a situation where Hikaru has to beat Guki and Fabi has to beat Nepo. Yes, and if they both do it, then both the Americans reach the top, but uh, Hikaru is half a point ahead. So. Yes, it depends on situation. If Fabi makes only a draw, and then so it, it depends. It's also possible that Nepo beats Hikaru in round thirteen. Oh, yes, yes. It's possible that Nepo beats Hikaru in round 13, Fabi makes a draw, and then Hikaru beats Gukesh in the last, and Gukesh makes a draw. Hikaru beats Gukesh last round, Fabi beats Nepo last round, and then they all share. It's also possible. Yes, all can. But uh, tell me this, according to you, of all the four players who have a chance, who is playing the best chess right now in terms of quality? Um, In terms of quality, uh, I think... Throughout the entire event is Gukesh, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fabi, of course, also very high level. But the thing is with Fabi, his base level is so high that it will be always high. Like Fabi, he ca- he's always going to play high level chess. Like it's just, he- he's just, you know, seasoned professional. For his standards, Fabi is playing a little bit, a little bit difficult. Uninspired chess, no? He's playing a little yeah. uninspired. Uh, he's, you know, he's under pressure. He's playing like a guy who is great. But it's under pressure. Like Carlson plays World Championship matches the same way. Like a very strong player that is under pressure, so he cannot show his full uh, potential. But he's still very, very strong. And he's still doing everything right. He's preparing, he's doing all the things. He's like Carlson in World Championship matches, exactly like that. He's still getting all these points, but it's so difficult. And it's not how it is when he's on a roll. But it still could be good enough. But it's, but it's currently not. Gukesh, of course, throughout the whole tournament showed the most uh, stable... Uh, Chess. Hikaru in the second half has been very good. Yes. yes. Uh, basically, no. Yeah, basically, he, no. Sorry, he, Hikaru. He, only if Hikaru, only games with Vidit were bad. The rest is good. His, good. Yesterday, his game with Firuja was very good quality. And apart from like few moves where he lost his advantage from opening the way he sacked the pawn, 
and this calculation with queen d7 i was like wow like he's thinking like a machine exactly he kind of played very well for apart from the games with did games with did were disaster but somehow this is okay it was uh, it happened yeah somehow uh, but hikaru has shown very high level nepo of course uh, very shaky because yes, nepo, nepo looks the most shaky you know very in this shaky. event and still he's at the lead like what Okay, How that game it? with Virit was, I mean, it was out of his, he was totally tilted in, the, that, in that game, yeah, you could see. Like, afterwards, he was at press conference, he was showing variations, and at some point he just said, yeah, I was just tilted. He just was just making moves, and he's a very good player, amazing player, everything is right. Uh, great, by the way, his fighting spirit is amazing. Like, that game, it started to go wrong. At one point, he could uh, play safe. He just kept pushing for a win, yeah? While being a leader already. That decision to me was very, very uh, um, not obvious. But I thought Vidit was pushing, no, for a win. Like he no, Nepo was pushing. Vidit, of course, was pushing, but Nepo also was pushing for a win. He was playing he for a win the point. entire time. Ah, entire time. Yes, he was playing for a win the entire time. It's clear from his play. He just didn't look back from the opening. He got advantage. Then things were getting out of control. He was just kept playing for a win without looking back. Even when Vidit was repeating moves in a better position for a move, then Nepo said, uh, fortunately, he didn't repeat again. I don't know if you watched the press conference. He was going yeah, to, yeah. he wanted to win the whole time. Uh, so Nepo's got the spirit, you know, he's got the skill, but of course, uh, he is emotional, also tiredness. nervous. He looks yeah. a little tired also. Yes, of course, of course. But there is a rest day though. Hmm. Uh, white with Hikaru, yeah, it's nice, but the last, and okay, last game is hard. Black with Fabi, who is in must win, last round, hard. Hard. Nepo has the toughest pairing, no? He yeah, has Hikaru sure. and Fabi. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, Hik Hikaru has kind of Nepo and Gukesh. Fabi has Prague and Nepo. No, the, you know, uh, so the easiest pairing by far is Gukesh. But yes. I think Gukesh is uh, the biggest underdog in a tiebreak. Do you agree? You here? mean he. Mm. Got it. I think he wants tie break the list and he should want it the list. Do you agree? I think he's uh, he has no such track record in rapid. He has some good rapid tournaments, of course, but I, I remember not the record in of Hikaru. You are masters, if you remember. Yes, but he, there yes, was a rapid playoff well. with uh, with Levon, yes. Nepo, and Gukesh. Yes, and actually Gukesh beat Nepo there. Yes, one game. he did beat Nepo, but he did lose to Levon. He, he, lost he to also uh, in the Tata Steel uh, tie break in Blitz. Yes, he lost to me first game, then he beat me in the next two games. But then he lost to Vei. So in tie breaks, he does okay, but he has it 1 1. Hikaru, I mean, Hikaru, of course, tie break is his. Uh... But, but tell me, Hikaru losing to Prague in rapid playoffs in World Cup was a big surprise to me, which showed that he, is, he can be, you know, fallible. Like, uh, of course, but that, that game, of course, was uh, mostly he lost a piece in the opening. opening yeah? It was some sort of an opening disaster. I mean, of course, I mean, anyone can lose. I'm just saying that, let's say, if Gukesh plays Hikaru in tie break, let's just say. Um, I give Gukesh 35, let's say 1 in 3 he will win, maybe 1 in 3, 35% uh, chance more or less, which is fine, but he's an underdog, right, then. Um, this is more or less how I see the situation between uh, Gukesh and Hikaru, in Thai. just just given the, the track record, you know, World Rapid and Blitz, Gukesh uh, hasn't been doing as well as Hikaru. Um, you know, the, everything, this this whole title Tuesday business, Champions Chess Tour. Gukesh had some good Champions Chess Tours, of course, but Hikaru, of course, has an insane track record. Yeah. Yeah. Hikaru has, and Nepo is also good Rapid and Blitz. Um, Fabi is okay also. I mean, from all these four people, I think Gukesh is the, not by far, of course, but very slightly an underdog. So he wants a tiebreak list, but he has the easiest pairing because I think he has white against Alireza. And... I think that last round game with Hikaru, in very likely that game Hikaru will not go after him. You understand? He might get a, he might get an easy ride there. This is a nice thing. This is what I suspect. This is such an exciting analysis, uh, Anish. I feel uh, very thrilled uh, that what will happen, and also the fact that anyone can win this tournament makes it so exciting. Uh, and and if you had to choose your favorite, is there anyone you would put your money on at this point? Ah, you mean so who I want or who I think will is most likely? Both, uh, I mean, are they the same or they are different for you? Uh, let me ch remi remind myself because on my uh, Twitter account, I, pl I posted today uh, my deep analysis. I'm doing, uh, I have, um, uh, I'm doing deep analysis where I'm uh, giving, oh yeah, I put Gukesh as 33% chance, Nakamura 27% chance, Nepo 25%, Fabi 15 
I think Gukesh is the favorite. I explained to you that he has the easiest pairing. Yeah. Um, the way things are going, I mean, Alireza is a tremendous player, but he is in a, such a such a shaky form. If you see uh, his games closely, he creates a mess, of course. No, but that's the problem. Like, he invites a mess, and then he's he was not able to handle that mess. How many times he miscalculated um, as compared to his opponents? Like, you have to see the games. So many miscalculations. Mostly because positions are difficult, but he is creating them himself, you know? So he will do the, again the same thing, I guess. He will again create a mess and will, uh, again, very likely uh, miscalculate something. But he, he did beat Gukesh in the previous, uh, ha previous half. Yes. Yes. But uh, yes. I do expect that uh, in round 13, Nepo, Hikaru, most likely draw. Prague, Fabi, most likely draw. Gukesh, Alireza, of course, Gukesh is the most likely player to win from all the three leaders. So that's why I give Gukesh better chances uh, because of the game against... Uh, because of the round 13. If we were in, if all the games end in round 13, we'll go to round 14, then the situation changes, then Hikaru becomes a favorite for me. Because the game Hikaru-Gukesh, I think more likely Hikaru will uh, win than lose, but will probably draw. And then in tiebreak, I take Hikaru over Gukesh. Uh, while uh, Fabi against Nepo, with all due respect, uh, doesn't matter actually whoever wins that game. Uh, I mean, Fabi, if Fabi wins or draw, he only get, reaches the tiebreak. So Hikaru still is the favorite. But with round 13 still left to play, uh, Gukesh is my favorite right now, given this game with Adereza. Thank you, Anish, for this very detailed analysis. Uh, Anish, we wanted to also ask you a few questions which our uh, viewers had sent in. Should I pull that up? For sure, for sure. So, uh, this was related to your and our, actually it's our course that we made. It is the Super Grandmaster's Guide to Openings, Volume 1 E4, Volume 2 D4 and basically it's two volumes. Before you came, I showed people uh, how it is and uh, I can also uh, basically show you this is how it looks. So, this is Volume 2. Um, just a second here. Yeah, so this is volume one. We had done this Rui Lopez, Italian game, Petrov, Scotch. So it's basically an entire primer for openings. Uh, so what I was saying is you get to know the entire terrain of openings through this. Maybe you have some other uh, things to add about this course that you have created. Well, you know, Sagar, I've created uh, multiple chessable courses, uh, which are extremely good, uh, extremely good. But uh, I've received, because, you know, I put uh, work into this, you know. I mean, not to disrespect anyone or anything or other courses. They're all good on chess. But they have high standards is very high. But I still, um, I've come across different courses, you know. Uh, so I see sometimes, because I can see, yeah, from the, uh, from the course, uh, how much uh, time people put, um, what kind of analysis do they give? Is it something recent? Is it old? Sometimes I see, I saw one course, for example, opening course. I go through it, I understand. How did the person make it? Like, uh, why are these very recommendations? Then I realize, aha, uh -huh, probably it's some old engine. And then he just used that same uh, analysis without rechecking and just uh, pack repackaged it and sold. Uh, I don't like like this, so I put, you know, I check my, uh, I make for the course, you know, with the latest computers. I um, think, you know, before I write every sentence, uh, describing, explaining what it is, I never write some sentence, you know, what we want, what the plans are, uh, without making sure it's correct, you know, uh, or without making sure that this is what I really think. So if I'm, I'm about to type like, and White wants to push G5, then I'm like, does White really wants to push G5? So then if I stop typing, I start moving a bit the position and I see, aha, uh -huh, he really wants to push. Or I see, oh, no, no, he only wants to push g5 if black goes short castle. And I say, okay, white wants to push g5 in case black short castles, you know what i So I want that everything that I write, all of these automatic things that you think I just write like this, that they're all um, make sense. So I really try to understand the, these positions because that also helps me, yeah? Then I really understand. So uh, I really put my uh, soul into my chessable courses. But, and uh, fortunately, I get good reviews. Some of the uh, negative feedback, uh, one stuff is that there are some people who say that, you know, oh, a lot of the positions, for example, in black repertoires, 
uh, sometimes you know you get position without winning chances or something but you know it's people who uh, don't understand that like in uh, high level chess uh, you sometimes best play by white makes you have to defend yeah if you want that you are better with black everywhere and have attack everywhere then you have to lie to yourself somewhere you can do that kind of course i can do that i can make a course where we are crushing everywhere but then i'll get feedback okay this there you didn't check computer move here you didn't check this move Com here the computer says white is much better here uh, with this move so what's like then i'll get this kind of, i don't want this kind of feedback yeah i want to give the so sometimes you have these positions. So this is the one type of feedback I get, which is completely fine. And uh, the other what I get is often people are asking me like, uh, but you know, like, uh, or they say, yeah, this got great courses, but uh, I'm noob, you know, I'm noob. Uh, for me to study neither of 24 hours, 24 hour course, my neither of course, my best uh, best selling, uh, best reviewed course, everybody's happy. But they say, okay, for me, this neither of 24 hours, all these too deep variations, my opponents don't even reach it. Uh, I'm noob, you know. I'm noob, and also people say, many people say, I'm broke. They say, you know, I'm broke, I'm student, I have no money for this, your course, uh, I don't know, $40, whatever. With video, your course is, uh, uh, I don't even know what it is, 100 or I don't know what it is, that, honestly, I forgot. The, but something like 100 or some more, I don't even know, maybe more, without discount. They do discount, still expensive, so they say, you know, I'm noob and I'm broke. That's all what they say. <laughs> and I understand, okay. I understand, I understand. We are all, um, relatively speaking, all noobs and broke. Uh, so now we finally have a course for people that are uh, noobs and are broke. <laughs> <laughs> this was not the promotion I was looking at but but it's the it's the honest honest uh, promotion that that ag is doing no no but on serious note yeah on serious note so this course um no, but this is serious yeah what you are saying this no no but on serious <laughs> note um okay yeah. basically those who are not broke can also get it right well they and you know the the rich will stay rich you know the <laughs> yeah yeah no of course um i think you from the what I saw, the promotion you give uh, and everything, the price is very f uh, friendly on Chessbase India. Um, what is the price? Do you, do, you, do you know the price from the top of your head? It is uh, 1999 for both volumes. Rupees, uh, yeah. Plus GST, yes. It comes to around 27 or $28, I think. Both volumes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, so it's a. Uh, that's one thing. And the other thing, more important, because, okay, people, they can, of course, sometimes, you know, you don't buy coffee for two days, you save this money. Yeah? Uh, what you uh, what you get, of course, is uh, something where the entry level is much, uh, much more accessible. Yeah, you don't have to be an experienced player, you can be new to the game completely. And if you are interested in the chess openings, then it's for you, basically. You just have to be a little bit interested about chess openings. And I know many people, like, mess. for me, like, chess openings was the most fascinating part uh, of, of the game. And I know many beginners, right from the start, they just begin chess. And immediately they, they want to know what is this opening, what openings, how openings, why, what's called the Greenfield, what's called this, why is this, uh, can I play Greenfield against E4, can I play against D4, what is the point, what are the ideas, like, how is it exactly? When is it called Greenfield? Is one knight f6? Or my son also asked me, like, he says, this, he says this Dutch defense, is it like uh, uh, f4 Dutch defense? No, no, I said Dutch defense with black. If you if they play d4, then you go f5. So, ah, okay, okay. So only, and I said, yeah, can you play against e4? No, you can't play against e4 Dutch defense. Because then you are, uh, <laughs> you understand? So um, people want to know this stuff. And uh, yeah, here we are trying to, um, we try to make a course where uh, we explain all the openings uh, we show uh, you know show the basics the ideas how many hours is in total sagar i, I forgot what exactly uh, the, it, it came out it to? is first one is three and a half second is also somewhere that so total around seven seven hours and few minutes yes that's uh, very big uh, even bigger than we had anticipated i was thinking it's going to be a couple hours but finally we were talking you know sagar here and time flew by openings there also there are so many openings in chess Finally, we covered um, seven hours, uh, so split into two parts. Sir, how would you describe this uh, course? What is it about? So, so here, this is what I have already, like people can see. This I just downloaded today because it got released yesterday. Mm -hmm. I also sent you the link, you can download it. It's basically all the openings for one E4 put here in the first volume. And whenever you click on an opening, 
not only do you get this video so like when you click here you can see the video by the way i have to still put in the uh, serial key uh, sorry about Wait, that did you uh, both buy it or you have the medical copy no 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 I for, so yeah, yeah. everyone gets a setup file and key so i uh -huh. just downloaded this for the stream and now i have to put the key in which everyone gets who yeah, buys yeah, nice, it nice nice so uh, this is where you can see the video and then what we did is we also put made this analysis uh, thing so nice. let's say if you are Rui Lopez, so you have a database here where there is something written about an, uh, about Rui Lopez. And by the way, this is not by Anish. This is done by uh, me and one of my friends here. So you get a very basic lines of Rui Lopez. What are they? Uh, and then there are games which are, let's say, Anish's game against Magnus. There is MVL, Anish, you know, all openings uh, of Rui Lopez. We have given one game with annotations on in the database so then people can you know get some direction some idea yeah yeah it's nice because uh, we just did the video with you sagar right we referred we, and we looked at one of my games for each uh, for each uh, topic uh, then it's very nice that you uh, added to this that all the games and the, what we discussed in video that you also put it into the text format that's very nice um, yes, and this yeah. way I, that is everything and by the way there is one small feature here which is called repertoire training if you click here you will get this entire thing online and then you can drill. So this is also very interesting. Like it says, please enter a move for white. So it will remind you. It's like kind of playing against uh, that repertoire. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drill, no, it's funny because, like uh, yeah, yeah. A bit like uh, trying something a little bit like chessable. I see funny. Yeah. Well, yes, I think so. Maybe similar, but uh, this was done way back. Like this feature is there on Chessbase since many, many years. But I, maybe it was inspired by that. I'm not sure. I don't know who was first, but it's very logical. Yeah, like that you are testing. Uh, I mean, that you are practicing. It's not like anyway, whoever was first. It's uh, yeah. like Duolingo. Yeah, basically, you are just uh, practicing what you learned. Normal, normal. Very, very good. Uh, and this is the D4 course. QGA, Semislav, Queen's Gambit, Nimzo Indian, Grunfeld, King's Indian, Benko, Benoni and so on. Uh, sir, one question to you. Uh, is it like a honest question? I don't even know myself. Is it uh, so you buy, you get an online, uh, you get download kind of link type thing or what? Two, uh, there are two, three ways. So first is you get uh, a exe file for Windows and DMG file for a Mac and the serial key. So that works directly. You don't need any software, anything. You uh -huh. just install it and make it work, right? Nice. Uh, you can open it on Chessbase. That gives you more features if you have a Chessbase software. But in uh -huh. case if you have a mobile phone and if you have a, a tablet, you still have the serial key, which you get. So you go to videos.chessbase.com like from there and you can also access it from there. So you can also stream it. So it's basically available on all platforms. Uh, and one other question for fun. Um, back in the day, that used to be like DVDs. Is it also on DVD? Is no longer done, yeah? Actual yes, DVD. Because, uh, in Germany, they they send it, so people have they have a very uh, regular followers who like it still in that format. So they make a few, but of course the downloads have much more sales than the actual. DVDs. But they make it. But it exists. I have sent you this this circular. Yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah. See, so they make it still. And this big one, this uh, Fenil, you know, this black one, this one, <laughs> like the Beatles records. Do they do that? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> so that is not available. Okay, no, very nice, sir. Okay, uh, I think we did some good promotion. Um, so if yeah. you are a noob and you want a course, this is for you, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and broke. <laughs> and broke, oh yeah. So uh, we, what we had said is all those who would buy it in pre-order because we started selling from 14th of April to 18th of April. There were four days and all those who bought in that got a chance to ask you a question. And there were around 10 to 12 people who sent in their questions. Can we very quickly, yes. you can answer them. Let's is answer it, the questions. Let's go. Okay. So here is the Q&A session. I want to give a shout out to Vidhi in our team who has mm -hmm. worked on these questions, sent mails to all the people. So first one, uh, Ishan says, I've been stuck at 1200 for a year, haven't learned or studied anything yet. I want to improve my chess skills. Will this course help me as well? Okay, it's a difficult question. Let me think. Hmm. <laughs> You've been stuck for, so you are a noob. Mm -hmm, that's good. 
<laughs> doesn't talk about his financial uh, probably also <laughs> broke <laughs> no but that's you don't you don't have to be broke <laughs> no no but it's uh, you are a noob uh, definitely 1200 is uh, difficult uh, to progress because there's the level where you stop blundering already the obvious things uh, but you still need uh, to improve a lot uh, this course, um, it will be very useful for you. You get overview of the chess openings and then you can uh, decide what opening you want to pursue. I think once you do that at the level of 1200, which is already quite decent, you do want probably to delve deeper into that topic that you've chosen. Yeah, Let's say um, you want to study the, the Karokan, for example. Yeah. You've decided that based on from what you saw that okay, Karakan is for you. Then you want to get some sort of Karakan course, you know, um, probably. Mm. So I don't think that this course honestly will improve your rating directly. It will, of course, uh, make you understand openings better because we keep talking all the time, Sagar. We keep talking about chess openings fundamentally, right? Like what are you the know, goals? You know, Anish, I also learned a few things in like I'm a pretty decent player, but when I asked a certain question you would often describe it at your understanding. So in that sense, I un I took away a few things from your over, like your approach is not like a very beginner related. You are go doing it for noobs, but you have the entire picture of, of course. having played it at the highest level. Of course, of course. Uh, no, you learn a lot. I'm just thinking if I say that you get higher rating and uh, Ishan won't, will he ask for refund or not? <laughs> Because I don't expect let's that you try, buy this let's course. Try this, it's Ishan. not like it's not really like uh, buy the course and get a 200 elo point boost. I don't think that's uh, you will understand openings more fundamentally. It will ignite love for that part of the game. Um, it will help you choose opening repertoire. But I don't think uh, it will make you unstuck from 1200. Let me put it this way, <laughs> by itself. Uh, but I think it will be very helpful for sure, for sure. But it's yeah, I, I think to get unstuck from 1200. Well, a lot of things uh, need to be uh, need to be done for sure. Like also at that level, uh, I mean tactics, tactics, tactics. Yeah, also very important. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that answer. Our faces are cutting the next question, but I'll read it out. Are both the opening courses good for kids, advanced, beginner players? Are there more tactical ideas or positional lines in this opening course? Shailesh Ir Israni asks. Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, I don't think the age. We only said that it's uh, that you have to be noob and broke. It doesn't matter, child or or adult. That's that, I don't think it matters. <laughs> no, okay. Jokes aside, um, we talk about ideas in the opening. Uh, in, I mean, most of these ideas are positional, in fact. Uh, but of course, when there is a some kind of obvious tactical trap, we mention it. But it's mostly you get understanding of the opening. Um, and yes, it is not like uh, when if you want to work on your tactics, you have to solve tactical exercises, which is a separate thing. There are tactics trainers online. There are tactical books and stuff. So I would say, yes, uh, if you want to decide, then it's more about uh, understanding of the opening and it's more positional. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, there is Satya Narayan who has asked a big question, it seems. Each chess opening has broad strategical idea on which opening moves and the vari variations are built up during a game. Suppose one of the players deviates from main theory in the initial moves and makes a move out of the usual line, then how shall the opponent respond to this over the board? How does the strategy of play response change in such situations? So there are two types of deviations, uh, let's say. yeah. Uh, often a move uh, that the opponent played that you haven't studied is just a bad version of the move that you did study. In that case, you just continue with the plan that you had already prepared and you just get a better version. And that's all. Sometimes a move that opponent plays that has a certain idea and you haven't studied that move before, then it's much more difficult to respond to that. And uh, then it's very hard to do that on, over the board. And uh, even the best players struggle and then you very likely will make a mistake. And then what you do is you come home, you analyze your game and then you see with uh, your coach or computer, you see uh, what you should have done instead and you come back stronger next time. So yes, uh, I think um, this is what I would say. Okay. Uh, next one is by Fuzzle Molvi. I'm a 2000 rated player on chess.com. I learned from my games while playing and that's it. This is the first course that I'm buying. 
can you tell me how should I approach learning it so that it can be of best use to me and everyone else who would learn from it? I think uh, just watch uh, the videos in the chronological order. Yeah, so from start to finish, from start to finish, just watch all the videos. Um, I think that's the as simple as, as that. I, I think it's a complete sort of course, so I, I wouldn't pick out things. It's not too long. I mean, my Night of Chessable course is 24 hours. Um, but seven hours, yeah, I mean, uh, space it out. Also, how, it, how much time you have? talk about so many different things, right, in those seven hours. Like yes, we, yes. We talk. No, but I, th I think I, I would just, uh, you know, since I mostly contributed to the, to the video, I would just watch uh, the videos. And then yeah. if you have more interest in one of the openings, you start with the material that you have uh, prepared by, by us, mostly Sagar. Uh, and uh, once you do that, if you feel you want to get more in depth, then you look for an appropriate course on that particular topic, yeah, further on. Uh, but I would I would start by just, yeah, just uh, watch the videos. It's luckily not so long, so seven hours, yeah, you can, you can do it. If you do one hour a day, in one week you're done. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Sanket says, I have difficulty understanding when and where to pawn break. How to decide that? Okay, it's very, yeah, we uh, talk about uh, we talk about pawn structures, uh, typical pawn structures in some of these positions. Uh, but when to do the pawn break, that's uh, something you don't know. Uh, you then you never you'll never learn. Yeah, these are the most hardest things. Usually, what you learn when you talk about some pawn structure, you say, okay, this is a structure. The way the pawns are positioned, one side wants to do this pawn break. Let's say King's Indian, yeah? Black wants to push pawns on the king side, white wants to push on the queen side. Um, that's all. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, the details, uh, what and how, if it was so simple, you know, the Gukeshes and uh, Prague's and Hikaru's wouldn't be playing, uh, you know, uh, chess for uh, this high level for so long and uh, they wouldn't be losing games uh, and so on because chess is very complicated so the, the details are hard but at least with the course you learn what are the typical ideas and what are the pawn breaks what are the structures and I think this is the basics you start with the basics and when to do the pawn break and how that's already too ambitious you'll do that after this is not for noobs and not for broke people so <laughs> this you do afterwards okay Jaswik says how important do you think good opening knowledge is up to 2000 ELO FIDE? When does it start becoming crucial to properly learn the key ideas or even subtler intricacies? Can I wing it by just knowing the surface to a certain level? So, sorry, sir, I'm a little bit uh, bad when I have the visual and the audio and I don't see the... Can you repeat again what uh, from start? Yeah, yeah. This one, oh, maybe how you can important move us, yeah. do you good up until think? Us. So... Um, the opening basics are vital, I think at the very start as well, the basics are vital and that is for sure covered in the course. I think we have a chapter at the start, yeah, where we yes, just fundamentals. fundamentals. I was actually very, very surprised when you started talking about it, but then I started to think uh, and then you also spoke about how chess 960 has sort of evolved a little bit of your understanding right now because Weizenhaus happened and so on. It was no, very but I think this epic chapter, I think this fundamentals, I would recommend even to other top players. To watch mm -hmm. i think uh, um, this is the chapter that's very dear to me and uh, i really put a lot of thought in it and yeah you were very very excited for that yes. one chapter i remember yes i think this is the highlight of the course i think um, chess is uh, there are a lot of cliches you know about chess that okay you know the develop pieces is that uh, a lot of basic rules but some of it is also very true, but some of it is uh, not so obvious and uh, yeah, fundamentals is exciting. For example, the base, just to give you a little uh, taste yeah, of what it is, like for example, very often, why you castle? Everybody says castle, you know, the, the thing where you move the king to the side and rook come, jumps over. Yeah, Why do people castle? They usually say to bring king to safety, yeah? to bring king to safety. But so often you castle, in fact, to connect the rooks, not to bring king to safety, so often. And this is such an important realization because then you know when the H file is already open for the rook, so often, or the other rook is already gone, you don't need to castle. You just go king f1, king g1, keep the rook on H file, or you don't even castle. Like many people, they assume that castling is to secure the safety of the king, but it is not at all a given. It is very often to bring the h1 rook into play. Very, very often. 
So uh, these kind of uh, things, you know, fundamentals. The um, why we don't play knight h3. Remember, this is a uh, this is a realization I had re recently. Don't play knight h3 because knight is better in the center. Because they say because no, the this is not at all. Pieces are because the yes. bishop on c8. Yes, not if Sagar, don't get those. No, Sagar, Sagar, it's for it's for it's on the course. Don't reveal. Don't tell them. <laughs> No, this was also a big thing for me. It's because huge. Whenever we are teaching chess, yes, we, we have say become put so it to the center. To saying the same things, yeah. We but say put knight on h3 because it's to the center. Then suddenly yeah. Carlson plays chess knight six, he pulls knight h3 and is winning easily, you know, uh, against Feruza. And everybody is asking what happened. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a very very big fundamentals is a, is a crucial chapter of the course for me. This is like the the key chapter of the course. And uh, this is uh, good for players of all levels, from start to, to finish. Okay. Yes. There are five more questions, so maybe we need to speed up a bit mm -hmm. because then uh, yeah. there's a guest joining in. Pritam Banerjee and Harman Nam says, what is the best way to remember multiple openings? Is there a long-term goal associated with each opening that should be kept in mind? Can you make a tier list of different openings based on most attacking to most defensive? Oh, this is a... Interesting stream yeah. idea at some point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, we basically we basically did that with the course, not in that way, but in a more like this is uh, how you would imagine it would work if you are a complete noob in chess. You cannot make a tier list like that because you know. But but basically with the course we tried to do as something as close to this as possible, as realistic as possible. Uh, and the best way to remember is well, the the only way to try and remember is to. Uh, understand as many patterns as possible and the more patterns you understand the more the more bridges you have in the, in your mind to connect things to each other that you can remember for example when i'm trying to remember a position blindfold if i just see it right away it's harder to remember than if i had calculated it for uh, uh, five minutes and if i calculate position for half an hour i remember it so firmly in my head it sits in my head because i have built all these different connections all these different patterns all the different pieces and moves after half an hour of calculating i my position the position sits very firm in my head and that's also how you remember best got it okay uh, the next question is by suhas who says which openings would you focus on for quick growth and is there a structured method of learning you would follow yeah there in chess there is no this uh, get rich quick scheme um that's why chess is a beautiful game uh, but uh, uh, how to choose the opening, uh, which opening to choose, uh, you know, the the short answer is a seven hour answer of, in the course, right? This is basically the, the shortest we could do. And um, yeah, this is... So you uh, watch it, Anish, you watch, they should watch it and then the answer will come from within that this I feel more connect, like this opening feels much more like what I can play and so on. Yeah, exactly. Because again, this this just simply like saying what is the best opening for quick growth or what is the most attacking opening. It's not how it is. You know, they are looking for an answer that is very easy, but chess is more complex than that. There cannot be such an easy answer. Okay, Mayur Gondarekar. Oh, he's also in the chat. He says for openings not covered in the course, one knight f three, one knight c three, one b three, one g three. It's covered. It's, it's actually covered. Will there be a separate explanation video? If not, should we base our uh, it is there, Mayur. We have covered it. Which uh, where, one. by the way? Because the one is e4, one is d4. Yeah, you said. No, in d4, it's not just d4. It's one d4 ah. plus one c4 yeah, plus yeah. knight f. No, we so covered everything. We covered everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revant Kumar says you won your first and only title third. Tuesday while not this first. course was. It was not first. It was the third title Tuesday, number three. Really? Yes. Oh, I thought it was your first victory there. No, no first victory. Yes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I thought he said that I won my, like, the first I Tuesday I won was the first one I played. I misunderstood. Sorry, sorry. You are right. I didn't get it. Like, no, no, that... I misunderstood the question. You, you are right. Yes. It says you won your first, but I thought he means you won your first I Tuesday. But he means you won the first I Tuesday while the, like, I, mis I misunderstood the question. Continue. While this course was in recording phase, so what gave you the extra boot? The making of this course or Sagar Pai, oh, this is... Yeah, I think uh, good energy. I think good energy. I spent uh, all my... Good vibes. Uh, <laughs> yes, good vibes and uh, my nervous energy. My nervous system was peak performance in that, in that stream. But then after my next tournament after that was a disaster. 
I used up all my uh, nervous energy in the Tile Tuesday and then in China I played very bad. But yeah, in Tile Tuesday that time... Very I... sorry, Anish. I've never apologized to you for your Shenzhen performance and maybe I had to do something related to it. So sorry for that. Uh, Taimur Sarfaraz says, since people are trying new things in chess, what's your thought about a tournament just on openings where you have to make opponents commit the worst wrong move as compared to the engine in first 10-15 moves? I want to, I want to add something here, Anish. In in May in Morocco, there is going to be an event oh, yeah, where four players are going to play, and they're going to start with some position that is a famous position of some classical game, classic game. You know, the Epic. Past. They invited me to that tournament. You didn't. They invited You're me to that tournament. Me. Okay. Uh, and then afterwards, they said, "No, no, no. Sorry, Carlson actually agreed, so you, <laughs> you don't have to come." <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> they agreed, you know, they offered me condition and everything. I agreed, yeah. I said, sure. Um, and then they said, yeah, yeah, no, no. They said, uh, sorry, we we didn't. Uh, Carlsen actually wants to play, so just uh, you it can It would have been skip. epic to have you because the tournament is Magnus, uh, Vishi, Hikaru. Nakamura yeah. and uh, Basem, who is yes. the uh, I mean Basem, yes. re local representative yes, from yes. Africa. So. Yeah, 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 no, I think Carlson didn't want to play first, uh, but then afterwards they changed his mind and they're like, okay, no, we have to kick out then the guy. <laughs> Such noob, seriously. <laughs> yeah, no, they need my course for sure. But um, no, good <laughs> tournament. Uh, you see, the one where they do some, uh, I mean, money was not so good, but I guess he, Carlson gets more, yeah? So I guess the sponsor has to put up more money now, because I hope he gets more than what I was offered, because it's not nothing amazing. <laughs> Anish is going on a different tangent now about that event. <laughs> yeah. But this Taimur Sarfaraz question is kind of similar to that event. Yeah, yeah. Like that. there were some tournaments like with themes. Yeah, like you can only play King's Gambit or something like this. But it's um, it's more fun uh, the way it is now because you can play any opening, not only one. Okay. Cool. Okay, that covers all the questions. Thank you, Anish, for that. Uh, and guys, you can check out all the links that are there in description, volume one separately, volume two, both together are the first, is the first link. And also if you are not from, uh, you know, chess-based software, chess-based India only services to certain areas. So if you are not from that, you can go and get it from chessbase.com. That link also is there in the description. You can check it out. And uh, Anish, thank you for making this. There is something that you have to do now, mm -hmm. uh, which are... Uh, viewers are not aware of so maybe we can do that you are going to play a blitz game against a very famous personality mm -hmm. guys anish is going to play a blitz game against a very very famous guy uh any guesses while uh, anish is kind of finding out things neha says sagar there is a question here from a parent how can a 1700 rated 13 year old improve further well if the 13 year old is 1700 fide he is already very very strong he or she and i think it requires very careful investigation there as to what their level is how what are the mistakes they are making and i wouldn't very lightly say it because to be 1700 fide at this uh, young age is already something something special so uh, i don't want to r lightly say or oh, work on something and that so maybe better is to send in your games perhaps a uh, few games at chessbaseindia at gmail.com i uh, every now and then check out a few games and suggest some things oh wow you do personal coaching via chessbase in their email yeah i just uh, there are people who send in their games i look at them and then i can get a better idea than just answering it doesn't i don't go like too deep but I take like 10 minutes, see the games, and I get a better understanding. It's like this Dr. Chess. Nice, nice, nice. You have time for that as well, yeah, Sagar? Sagar, by the way, you are sleeping, yeah, sometimes, I hope? Because I saw this reel, it looks very worrying. <laughs> Yesterday, I was on live stream with Amruta, and I was sleeping in it. So Amruta said, please go away. So I just clicked on leave meeting on Zoom. <laughs> And I just dozed off there. And then all the photographers kind of came, clicked one photo, video, everything. They all enjoyed. And then when I woke up, they all were showing me, look, you are sleeping, look. 
There is evidence of you sleeping at some point. No, because also, guys, Sagar, he scheduled the stream for the wrong day. Because I think for him, it's all one long day, the whole tournament. He doesn't know, 20, 19, 18, like it's one long, long I, I day. I have no clue. I have no clue. I just go, I cover, I come back, I do this, I go. And I don't know last time when I ate food, like uh, lunch, dinner, for example. So it's like this. There is some alu parata, right? Some video with alu parata, I heard. <laughs> alu parata was there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are doing a first ever meetup in uh, in uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. Just India meetup. So yeah, it's nice. By the way, uh, so should I go to chess dot com? Uh, I don't know where's my challenger. Uh, he's there. You have to challenge him. Oh, I have to challenge him. He won't him. Okay. come on stream. Okay, I have to challenge him. I'll challenge him. He will come after the after the games are done. That's what okay. he had mentioned. Okay. By the way, guys, uh, for this stream, because we have less time, I couldn't do one thing which I had prepared. But later on, maybe someday we will try it out with Anish. It was this thing. Uh, no, wait, where is it? Mm. One second. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, this is the one. So, Anish, what I did was I went through all the games and I kind of found the critical moment of opening where new ideas were played in the candidates Oof. yeah and i wanted to get your thoughts on uh, this each so there were some very nice uh, new like with it c6 mm. against nakamura mm. and all but someday we can we can think of it yeah uh, you will have to challenge him i guess on do you see a challenge from me he says Ah, do I see a challenge? Yeah. Guys. No, it's outgoing. Anish is going to play against the one and only. The biggest YouTuber in the world of chess. And it's going to be an epic game. I think one game, right, Anish? Yeah, but I'm not sure it's going to work. Uh, 10 minutes. Let's I'm... See. Yeah, I sent. I don't see challenge. See. Levi, come on, you need to make it work. Let's see, let's see. Oh, wait, you're froze probably. Wait, wait, wait. I'm frozen. No, but I know this, I'm noob. I I, I know already. I have to not minimize you. Uh, wait. Yeah, now it's good. You're good, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Did you did you get this challenge? Let me see. No, I only have one going one. So guys, uh, Levi is uh, going to play against Anish right now, and he's actually recording it offline because he is uh, doing uh, something related to a product which he has with him, and that we will get to see maybe later on at some point. Um, that video, I think Levi will release it on his channel. So what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, follow the game of Anish and when it starts and then we can see and Anish might also give his insights on how he will play. Meanwhile, I will send the link also to, uh, I have sent it to a few people. Uh, I don't know if they will join. but. Oh, okay. One second, I have a message from one of the guests whom I had invited, so I should, but it's a voice message. No, I don't think I have the... I don't see the challenges. Where do I see? They should come up here, right? Somewhere. See. Okay, got it. What is daily now?
Guys, uh, the Wrong challenge tab. part okay. is a little complicated, but once the game starts, it will be fun. Is then chess.com slash play slash online. Okay, now I'm there. It will be under. Which under? On on bottom right, it comes, Anish. Yeah, yeah, it should. Generally. And you are playing with which ID? Anish Giri on YouTube or something? Anish on YouTube? Yeah, Anish on YouTube, I'm here. I think his challenge is not working, right? But uh, you can just challenge him no, on his username. Is it not possible? I think he needs to issue the challenge. Huh. Levi, come on. You know all this technical stuff. Anish is not so good at tech technology. So I'm a bit boomer, you yeah. Have to, <laughs> you have to get it working. But the boomer stuff works best in my channel. Remember, whenever we have boomer issues here, the viewership just goes up. Yes, it's happening today. <laughs> when you are not talking, is it happening? Like yeah, we yeah. spoke about candidates, scores, everything, and the viewership keeps dropping. And then you are sitting there doing nothing, adjusting OBS. And then it goes rising. Like, what is Anish going to talk? Yeah, I'm now looking at my friends and I'm wondering what are my friends. I have like Gotham Sagar Raina. I am. I don't know who that is. Alessandra Botes, Vidiches. And then some three people with the... I don't know who are these people. Why Sagar right now? Who is that? I am. This is me, Sagar. Because in one of the streams, I Amruta had to beat Samai. If not, my name was going to be changed from Sagar Shah to Sagar right now. So, it's me. But what happened to your rating, Sagar? Sagar, no, you can meanwhile uh, show me some position. Let's do the positions. Ooh. Ooh, really? Yeah, let's do it. Wow. I want to, I actually, I wanted to ask about this one. So, uh, let's go. So Anish, this is the one which was my question to you. It is very fresh from the oven because it happened just yesterday. And this was the game between Guki and Abasso. H6 move. It's not a novelty. It has been played before. What are your thoughts on this move? Uh, I know this move. You knew it. I knew it. Would uh, you have ever played move. it? Epic Would you have ever played it? So, um, the idea is that if white plays e4, yeah. I'll go c5. Um, if I knight at seven, if five, no, 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 you would think, hey, but no, no, if I cd, cd, ef, dc, yeah, and uh, no. yes, let's say bc, or I know, but I, sorry, 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 uh, no, no, sorry, if I cd, a3, if I cd, a3, Sagar, that's the that's the line, if I cd, a3, okay, yes, and uh, with castle, this is a problem, also interesting. So, uh, so if you are saying that if here there was castles e4 c5 e5, e5 cd e3. cd ef no not ef not ef directly sorry. a3 yeah e a3 this Bishop is a a5, problem ef yeah ah wait a second one second, 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 second. Uh, so the point is that without castle after h6 i have bishop of eight after a3 oh Oh my god, what a deep point. So here the bishop cannot come back because there's a rook. And because h6 is kind of a waiting move in this line takes a3, bishop f8. Oh my god. Oh my god, really? Yes. Oh. Let me check if I can allow, ch if I have allowed challenges. Allow challenges, everyone. Yeah, no, I think it and works. Yeah, this so, so this one idea this, after h6. This is why I wanted to do this with you because you can show something which would take like 10 hours for someone to understand in like 10 seconds. Unbelievable. Uh, but uh, after h6, so knight f3 is what he played. Yeah. c5, dc, knight a6. 
what i remember is whenever the knight is on f3 this knight takes c5 knight e4 is very good yes yeah, so he waited for knight f3 and then okay uh, so i knew h6 but honestly i didn't know the knight takes c3 thing so uh, knight takes c3 bishop c5 knight h7 this i didn't know so i assume the idea was to go bishop takes c3 but i didn't know this knight c3 bc bishop c5 i mean i didn't check this so deeply i knew h6 is just an idea Knight h7 but is insane. Knight h7 is insane, right? No, but it's like, Unproblem. okay, but it's basically, it's very, very, very uh, simple logic here, I can tell you. So white wants to play e5 and move the knight from f3. Yeah, yeah. Uh, black wants to go rook b8, b6. But if black starts with rook b8 uh, directly, then it's bishop f4. So he just does the move order, where he first goes knight h7, then provokes uh, e5. Ah, but then maybe he can go a little bit more useful move, no? Like rook d1, then rook b8, there is bishop f4 still. Uh, no, but then so I can castle. A... Ah, you still... And the moment moves. you go e5, preparing for knight d2 or knight d4, that's when I go rook b8. Oh, got it. So it's just a move order thing, but it looks but, epic. But, but can I not do rook b1? Because but now I can play b6. Now, now, I, no, I, now I can play b6. Ah, b6. e5 is no longer there. Yeah. b6, yeah. because e5 is not there. Right, right, right. Got it. Nice. But of course, uh, like, like I knew when he played knight h7, I knew that if I'm going to put on computer now, it will say that black is fine. But, uh, of course, it looks insane to go knight h7 in the opening. Yeah. Oh, nice. Amazing insight there. Wow. This was epic, Anish. Thank you for sharing. Um, wait, let me, till you are fixing the thing with Levy, let me see if I have another interest. Ah, yes. This is my one of, I would say this is the opening of the, this is the highlight of the event for me somehow. F5 by Prague. What is your feeling about this? Yeah, no, this is uh, very, very risky. I mean, you are showing me all kinds of ideas, Sagar, where we, which we sort of would criticize in our course. <laughs> they're, all, they're not for noobs, these ideas. You show me the weird ones, the freaky ideas. This is so dubious it, for black. I, I'll tell you how it is. You, you know, know what, I'll, Sagar, you know what I'll tell you the funny thing? How, yeah, what it compares to? Okay, let's, the yeah. best way is d4, e, d, e5, yeah? Make yes. d4, e, d, e5. Uh, e d4, e d, e5, yeah. So, you know what this is like? This is like uh, 1 d4. Albin counter gambit. Oh, you know. Yes. It's an epic Albin counter, counter gambit. d4. Yeah, just to show you. d4, d5, c4, Ah, you knew, d4. yeah? Nice. Yeah, d4, knight f3, knight c6, g3, bishop, g4. When it's... I was actually playing, Albin counter gambit was a very big thing because Morozevich was playing yes. it a lot. Yes. And people wanted to try it. And I had to face it many times. No, Moro was a hero. Knight f3, knight c6, g3. Bishop g4. It even is the same. It's even similar, you know? Like, let's say g3, bishop g4. It's even si like colors, like, it's like mirrored. But yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. insane there because the king is so weak on D on... Because you have pushed your F pawn, not yes. your C pawn. Yes, yes. Yeah. Crazy. So this was a great... Uh, I think Prague just played it... Just point one critical, critical moment in that game, Sagar. We did he could uh, make draw with knight g 7 at some point and he didn't do ah, it. Yes. That was, of course, uh, in hindsight, a big mistake. Already things went wrong in the opening. Here. Yeah, knight g 7 was forcing a draw here. He saw it. And queen h5 check is just perpetual. Already it went a bit wrong. He could just uh, do the emergency break, but okay, he went all out, all out. Yeah. So this one uh, was nice. And uh, Anish, have you made any progress on your game with Levy? Uh, not yet, no. The Levy because Levy does some high tech business, but high tech stuff, of course, it's uh, I don't know. The, also, the challenges on chess.com, it's always for me been uh, I don't know the settings yeah, maybe or. You can actually improve it. That thing. Yeah. Okay, this one was also very interesting for me. Uh, it was not such a big kind of a thing, perhaps, but it reminded me of Ding's match against Nepo. Uh, oh, wait, 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 this... wait, 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 wait. Maybe my setting wasn't good. Ah, okay. So uh, finally, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get now. I'm gonna get now. <laughs> what are you going to get? Uh, I'm gonna get the challenge now. Ah, okay, got it. Okay, okay. Let's see one more. Neha says someone here suggested that Anish may have disabled requests from friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you have enabled requests from everyone else but not from friends that's why my friends are actually my enemies <laughs> <laughs> my friend list is my enemies we did got them but actually some days like when you gave that interview to why can't say where you said i have very little friends it it was very nice it was funny but somewhere i did feel very sad there like when you spoke like for all the people friends. who are not my friends you mean <laughs> no just like how lonely you are or something on that I'm front. lonely like you, you, you matter what no no in that interview you said because i have very few friends with it is one of them something like that in why can't say you had mentioned oh. no don't remember was it why can't say or somewhere else Ah yeah, we I can say you said I'm facing with it. I don't want to beat beat him or something. I have very few friends. Uh no, but Sagar, like seriously, I have a uh, few friends. Um uh, but um uh, you know, it's not like um something you should chase. Quantity kind of thing. It's not like uh, rating. The more the better. It doesn't work like that. True. That is I agree. You know, it's an um, it's a mutual thing where two people um decide that uh not decide but where two people you know they enrich each other's life you know and if the friendship does that to both of them this is a beautiful thing but if it doesn't for one of the two then it's better not to do that right it's like sort of like a marriage except uh, except <laughs> okay it's different a bit <laughs> you can also have like 100 marriages if you want I and mean, good luck okay <laughs> but <laughs> or 100 friends i mean not like the more the better yeah you, you okay i have 5000 facebook friends similarity between you and samai when you guys start speaking something that makes sense to me i feel the punchline is just around the corner like i'm like wow they are talking what i i now truly feel this really deeply and then you know, the it's so funny comes. so i'm waiting now where is the punchline we did uh, we did had uh, <laughs> we did had uh, this interview with levi in fact and at some point levi asked him some innocent question and suddenly vidit starts complaining about that you know there is some uh, girl he wants to take out no no it's like yeah something like that and that she sort of i don't remember like there was something levi asked him something completely different about chess and vidit made some analogy like that yes he also wants to you know to, he's dreaming of some girl but she sort of he knows it won't happen so he doesn't care some kind of thing like this you know I have, to, I have to watch that. You have to watch. Yeah, you have to watch. So, suddenly, yeah. like, he decided to... Yeah, suddenly all basically topics came to... One-sided love is what Zuel Lop is saying. It was an analogy about one-sided love. One-sided love, yes, yes. Something like mm -hmm. that. Though there was no love. Or it's just that he had some, yes. Basically, By the way, yes. Anish, mm -hmm. I have a, uh, someone who's viewing this is our very good friend and arbiter who has access to chess.com setting up matches. So he said, "Should I start the match between Levi and Anish?" Ah, let's try. You have to come in live no, no, chess, but, it's, but it's, you uh, have to come in live chess. I'm in live chess, but it's uh, on the specific board, yeah. Ah, yeah. He has this uh, board with him, like uh, actual board, and he has to play. I, I think this uh, board has to. Uh, you have to issue the challenge through the board, probably, to get it. I guess. Okay. Yeah, someone you like, but she doesn't like you. That was the thing. Yes, yes. No, I'm ju I'm just teasing, uh, basically teasing Levi's interview with Vidit. That's what I'm doing. I'm just pumping, yeah. artificially pumping Levi's uh, views. He will see today his spike on his like usual YouTube graph, and suddenly today is like, <laughs> suddenly like, what happened? Oh, AG has advertised his uh, his video. Oh. By the way, Anish, are you surprised? And this is my one question: Are you surprised that in this tournament, for a win, people are playing exchange French? What is wrong with people? Or am I am I stupid? Well, I can tell you why Hikaru and Nepo played. Played. So uh, after one e four e five nine three nine six, in the Petrov. Yes. They have no idea what to play, so they prepared knight e five d six knight of three knight e four d three. Knight of six d4 uh, d5 bishop d3 Correct. bishop d3 yes. yeah so they have some they've looked at this position because they have they don't know what else to play against Petrov and okay they whatever they they studied it in great detail they want to play it then they were like oh I was spending a whole month on Petrov there is also French what to do and their second is like but we have great idea in French you can go ed ed and you get the same position. 
Now if you have six bishop d3, bishop d6, same position. So that's basically the explanation. They have no time left for French. They wasted all the time on Petrov. They found no ideas in either. But now they can play the same thing against both. <laughs> or I was thinking they saw through knight d2 line, knight c3 line in the French. And then they are saying, no, the exchange French has better opportunities. I mean, that would be insane. Uh, well, I don't think they bothered much with the French. They didn't really expect it to happen. It's become the, this has become the main position of the opening. Like there are six games in this now. Through Petrov, through yes. French. No, it's a, I, I actually memorable game for me. I beat Jordan here with black. Oh yes, in this Vikanze. Yes. And we cover it in our, in our course. We covered it in French defense. That is the game we saw. For Remember French? he blundered a piece. Yes. Oh really? Yeah, we did. Yes, yes, yes. We remember he he we, queen f six move you played and we yeah yeah yeah. Oh, we yeah. we did that for the yes, yes. oh okay 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 for our course yeah. yeah 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 no I played the French yes the this time yeah that's why that's for sure. Uh, one more idea till it yeah let's do one more. Is this one? I thought. Maybe it was uh, the most surprising game, not opening, but the game result for me. Because Prague lost this with White against Hikaru. Yeah. And I thought this was a very big result for Hikaru. Like this basically took away Prague's chances. Well, it's very simple. I can tell you what happened. Hikaru prepared for round one against Fabi. He was completely terrified of prep. Completely terrified. So he prepared these uh, crazy systems. E5, no? He e5 in the Sicilian, and yeah. if Fabi goes d4 to play this d5, c5 thing. Ah. So he prepared so some super drawish, super uh, desperate systems against Fabi, against e4 and against d4. Then at some point he played uh, Nijat. He realized, okay, I guess Nijat is not going to do this, it's too much. It's just going to be a draw anyway, why to waste it? And then he played Prague. He kind of had to win, but he thought, okay, Prague also has to win, so let's throw this one out. So he used it, and actually, remarkably, he even won. Like, this is, uh, yes, it is an yes. ultimate drawing weapon, but it's crazy he got to win. But of course, it's normal. When White is playing for a win also, that's how you get chances. Mm. Got it. Wow, what a deep insight there that he may have. He, in his interview, he said he prepared this one month ago, but could be against Fabi. Yeah, I mean, I I guess so. Uh, for the I mean, mod, I, like Fabi plays e4 mostly, but okay, in case he would go d4, he would have it ready, yeah. Yeah. And then uh... <laughs> the game is not starting, and we are doing more and more. Yeah, yeah. C6 by with it. Yeah, it's epic C4. move order. Epic and move I order. think this is the this actually gave with it a. Very big win. Yes. He was waiting. He's basically not letting rookie one bishop of one regroup happen. This is the idea. Uh, but, do, but do you think like if next time white goes, he will try this for an uh, advantage? Well, computer anyway says uh, uh, on some depth that it's equal after knight g6. Anyway, gives it a mm. sequel. Because the d6 pawn you play around it is very weak apparently. Knight on b1 is very bad. With the pawn on c3 blocking it. That's the issue. So apparently this works for black. Of course, before before good computers, people would never, people would never dare to do this. Mm. But now they do. They do. Okay, sir, I managed to get a game with uh, with Gotham. Wow. Okay. It started. Uh, yes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I can see it. I can see it. Wait. Let me, guys. I'll show you so we can follow the game together with Anish's. I can comment it and maybe... Hey, hey, play, 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 play. Play, play, go some play, play, play. Game will auto abort. This auto abort in the chess.com is a crazy feature. I mean, um, crazy, yeah. Not gonna be like somebody making some jokes here, but uh, strange, this feature, this doesn't let you wait a minute. The leeches is the same. They also don't let you wait. Come on, come on, come on. Should ah. I call him? No, it's a, he says the challenge went through, but still not working. <laughs> ah, the board is not. Guys, the higher the tech, uh, 
the harder it is to get it to work. It's all experimental, high tech. Okay, Levy got a draw here. His uh, historic, historic. Uh, I got, I got a draw against Anish. Like he's gonna make a video about it. Like he's gonna, he's gonna be the thumbnail. I drew. You know. I drew three, five exclamation marks. Uh. Okay, sir. Yeah. I think if this doesn't work out, Anish, maybe at some point you also have to go back to your life. Yes. To my life. Yeah. Yeah. I think I mean, it's uh... kids, your family. So perhaps you had limited time, I believe. Yeah. 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 Not true. True. If not for Sagarsha guys, my, uh... <laughs> <laughs> my personal, uh, I'd be in trouble. Okay. Last <laughs> Le Levy wants last thing, last attempt. Okay. So while Levy tries to fix that, uh, let me see if I can yes. pull up another position wow is... both joint 10 minute pool crazy what uh crazy idea okay ah there there is an event created just for two of you yes and no but the guy, there's like two hundred forty thousand two hundred forty thousand people playing and levy thinks me and him are going to match I don't know, like... <laughs> 240,000 people playing. Most people yeah, playing... Most people playing 10-minute chess. There's no chance you're gonna match in the pool. But maybe if we click... Uh, at the exact same time. 10 plus 5. Okay, let's do that. Uh, 10, 10 plus five. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah, I love. Hilarious. Anish, <laughs> what were your thoughts yeah. on the move knight H2 by Nepo here. Do you think it was yeah, like a very big move? Epic. Epic, yes. Uh, my favorite ideas are the ones that have some point. And this one it has a point of going at 4 or 5. Of course, the knight on h2 is clearly... It is... You know what's the problem with the knight? It serves only one function. It plays against h5, correct? Yes, but it defends the g4 point. But it only serves one function you normally want a piece to serve more than one function on a position full of pieces. Mm. So it felt a little bit, a little bit suboptimal. That's why it was not played before, but still it had a very clear idea of going a four or five. So yeah, I liked it. Of course, what white would ideally prefer is to go knight h4, f4 and bring the king to g3. The knight on h4 is supporting the f5 push much more. Ah, yes. But there was no time for it. Knight h4 would be met with h5, h5 yeah, right? Yeah. No, knight, so knight h2 is pretty cool. But Vidit played well, by the way. Vidit, uh, Vidit was fine. You know what? Uh, you can click the game. You know what was decided moment? Click through the game. Yeah, no, g5 was cool. Very cool. So it was all unclear. Um, both sides could improve. a3 was not accurate according to the computer. So it continue, continue. Continue, continue. So we played h5. Very cool move. Uh, rook brought the rook. Not so... No, was not so bad in after all. Yeah, so brought the rook. It worked out well after g6. Take, take. Rook d8. No, no, sorry, sorry, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you can you go a few moves back? No, no, rook, rook b5 was a mistake. Can you go a few moves ah, back? No, no, rook, yes. rook b5 was correct. Rook b5 was correct. Bishop c1. C4. This is, you know what? Of I course, c4. What happened there? both of them after the game to Vidit and to Nepo and they both said it felt like a strategic error to them. Yeah, because... In the pawn endgame, sort of, it would have been. But so both said knight f3. Yeah, but and h4 then I said and h4, rook, yeah. and they said king g2, and they both felt like, oh, this white is better. Mm. But no, I have a computer understand. screen plus one for black. But you know, Grishuk saw it without computer also. This. Uh, yeah, but you know, okay. 
No, no, I got some noob here. Anish, by the way, Anish is explaining the most complex of opening and uh, middle game ideas of candidates while trying to match his game with Levy. So, I don't know uh, how he's doing it, but it's not easy. Oh, I managed. But let's see if it will work. Let's see if it will work. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, I matched. <laughs> okay, Levy has the white pieces. Yeah, he has black pieces here. Okay, we can abort and rematch. For all those who are joining in right now, you can oh, also he made follow the move. this stream. Oh, he made? He made the move. But it's not come here on the screen. Yeah, yeah, I see it. You see it? Yes. Okay, it's working, it's working. Okay, guys, epic. Let's play quickly. Somehow, niche on YouTube, watch. Okay, epic. So I'm gonna play oh, the London. Oh, it's working. Yeah, let's go. I wanna play the London. Okay. That's how we roll. London is covered on our opening course. I probably uh, talk something bad about it there, but it's, uh, you know, explain the ideas. He's uh, insisting on uh, not controlling this square, so I'll develop this knight and just go for e4. Probably. Mm. Mm. Now you transposed it into Jobawa, yes? Uh, well, it's going to transpose to a pirk of sorts, probably. Probably I'll go e4 at some point, and then it will get some sort of a pirk structure by the way he's playing 50 minutes 15 minutes plus some increment no <laughs> you know it was funny because kramnik was wrote something about joining the stream at some point or uh, on yes. twitter you know if yes. he would join now he would say okay yes. guys are both in headphones they're talking about the game <laughs> <laughs> no i had invited him he mentioned that he will join at some other point uh, -huh. uh he cannot join today so uh -huh. yeah yeah i think he was bluffing i called his bluff I think he writes that he wants to join. Uh, he's trying to, like, he's kind of trying to, f to sort of get into uh, a conversation with me, sort of, on Twitter, <laughs> to then bring attention to his issue that he wants to discuss. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to farm my comment comment bots for for his. Uh, <laughs> using your technique against you yes <laughs> no one of the most brilliant marketing strategies that anish has used until now and i'm in complete awe of it was when prague had won the world cup and was at the peak of his sort of followership he said like something 10k likes i i take a selfie with prague yes, yes. at grand swiss yes. and then that got 10k and then he took a selfie and then he said, give this some number of likes, so I released the selfie. Then he got the... <laughs> then the selfie got something. No, but that was the time where uh, I was briefly confused. I forgot my best friend actually was Gukesh, of course. I just forgot. So I completely... I mean, I don't know what happened to me. I had some blackout. I just... Uh, my, of course, I was... My best friend was, of course, was... So I played it not very well, this opening, because... Uh, if you play a4 after a6, then it's harder to castle long. So now I castle short and we just play a position. And black should be quite comfortable here. So yeah. yeah uh, what, what went wrong here, by the way? Well, nothing too wrong, but I basically uh, went a4 early and now ah. I can't castle long anymore. Got it. You wanted to do queen d2 and long castle. Yeah, but somehow here I was already thinking he's going to hit me. Uh, he's going to hit me with b5, you know. But I should have gone e4 here. a4 was not accurate. And I knew it. Mm -hmm. Knight b4. Okay, this is a good move. I'm going to play here. I'm going to try to surround oh. the knight. Nice. He has this c5 idea very often. But then you can move your knight from c3 back and c3 might trap the knight, no? On uh, on yeah, that's, a, that's an idea I was thinking about as well. But I have to be very careful. Um, I have to be very because careful to make sure it works. Yeah, yeah, because there, there are all kinds of tactics there. But it's definitely an idea I was considering as well. For sure. By the way, we have a super chat. Hikaru love you. Are Archit bhai. Hikaru. Nice. 
we also had some more super chats i should at some point uh read them but i'll read it later levy probably recording some epic video right now as we speak <laughs> uh where he is you know uh, but it's He's currently saying... being recorded it's currently being recorded by the way did you see his uh yeah, C six is good. Now your uh, idea you, I was thinking already that you mentioned that doesn't work anymore. Uh, can start with rook a four. He'll go c five. Can then play knight b one. Very desperately trying to win a piece. Knight e four and c three. Yes. Could work, huh? Let's see. Let's see. Let's try. Hmm. I don't see why it doesn't work right now. It, I I feel it shouldn't work, you know? Yes, because because you know what will happen. You will take CB4, you will lose the B2 pawn, yes. something like... Yes, exactly. He will, he will win few pawns. Exactly, right? exactly. But but uh, the way I see it like so far, I can also just take, but I yeah, let's try. But somehow the, all the things that I see, wherever... He, he should do it very carefully, because if he just takes two pawns, I'll be better. But he can try to be smart. He can go B5 somewhere. Uh, in the variations, mm. he can try to. He can go e5 somewhere in the variations. Bishop d7 somewhere, intermediate move. He has all these intermezzos. It's very Let's artificial. See how, he, how he deals with it. This is interesting, actually. What you have done is, if uh, if there is a super GM uh, sitting opposite you, he will understand the gravity of the situation and play those moves. But will Levy also play that way? Is the question. Will the super IM do that? Yes. Yes, that's the... Uh, yeah, you know, uh, maybe it's actually quite good for me. I don't know. But, like, it doesn't feel that way. You shouldn't be... This is a bit uh, unnatural. This, sh this shouldn't be so strong. Guys, uh, two versus one is not happening here because the only thing I can do is reduce Anish's strength here. So, maybe I will uh, not suggest any moves. I'll just uh, listen to him. Yeah, but guys, this is um, this is a content game, and uh, okay, we both have uh, Levy is aware, yeah, what's uh, what's happening as well. So it's it's fine, it's fine. This is like a friendly game here, uh, where the friends are me and Sakar. <laughs> no, no, but this is fine, guys. Uh, it's all good. But it's true. You mentioned ninety one move. I actually, of course, I saw about ninety one move before you mentioned it. I was thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, Night was it was very. Uh, I, you know what I've realized is, yeah. if I get an idea, it is very, very likely 99.9% .9 that the G, that, that a player of your caliber will see it. Like, so there is no doubt. Uh, that it depends on the see. type. On, it depends on like in the opening stage, especially in my case, very likely that I saw the motif as well. Yeah. No, and of course, of course, the, the night on before here, it is screaming for this. Yeah. Like it's. It is trapped completely, so that's why I played also a five. Like it's screaming to be trapped. So uh, I did see number one idea, but I'm not sure. I think it maybe well, actually. What is the variation which worries you here from black? Like because it feels like you are going to push c three. I don't is see the. Uh, I don't see the issue. By the way, honestly, ninety four c three. I don't see the issue. So maybe you just got a good position. I yeah? think so. I, I mean, I I don't doesn't feel like that to me, but. Maybe. I don't see the issue. Uh, maybe e6, c3. So if e6, if c3, ed, cb, d. No, but then even just d, knight, d2. Yeah, it looks uh, looks better for, for white. Everything looks better for white. Some bishop d7 has yeah. to be inserted. Bishop d7, yeah, uh, uh, even maybe c3. But okay, bishop d7, rook, rook a1 was the move I was calculating. Bishop d7, rook a1. Yeah. A 94 c3, and then I'm threatening to take. Again, I don't see the don't see the the move. Wow, guys, did you see how uh, the knight got trapped without any? Oh, he played e6. Yes, yeah, this is a move I mentioned. Uh, yeah, I can even think about taking and taking, but I uh, yeah. think the more ambitious yeah. to try and trap the the knight. Because you could take on e6 and take on d6. Yeah, right? but then but then the knight always has the c6 square and uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I want to I want to you know he of course wants to save the knight at all costs and I want to take that knight 
And I'm not too worried about ED, CBD. Because I'll only have, I'll have, uh, he'll have only two pawns. I got some super chat with th saying thank you, Hikaru. I don't know why. Yeah, we collected the piece. He's got two pawns, uh, but it's it's not enough, I think. It's not enough uh, because knight is usually worth three pawns. Uh, not enough. This is a typical idea, by the way, uh, but somehow he had to play... Maybe he had to play... Direct e6? And then after rook a4, you know, Sagar, he will, he wasted the whole move with c6. Ah, he could have played direct, yeah. Some yeah, other move, yeah. and then after uh, yeah. rook a4, c5. He could have gone e e6. Yes, there. e6, rook a4, c5. Yes, I think that's what went wrong. Mm. Nice. Nice game, actually. Very nice. Very instructive. Uh, yeah, I'm curious if he'll be able to drum up. Actually, he has got this knight d5 idea. But I will probably take queen e4 there. And if he goes knight d5 directly, which is also possible, there should be some... Uh, there are some other issues. e4 pawn hangs, for example. No, but knight d5 f4 bishop is hanging, right? Uh, knight, d5, knight d5 bishop g4, you mean? Knight f4? Ah, knight d5 bishop g4, knight f4, yeah. knight d4. I thought knight d4 mm -hmm. f5. I thought, mm, worst case, I have knight d6, fg, and queen b3, and knight f7. Worst case. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, there must be some other things as well here hanging. Clearly, clearly must be other. Yeah, there in that position, it's just very overwhelming. So I think he's uh, not doing great, yeah. Because this b4 pawn, it is, you know, it is on the side, but it's still kind of fighting for the center a bit by mm. hitting the mm. c5 pawn. Yeah, fighting for the center is a thing, yeah, Sagar? That is just a thing. We talk about it on the course, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and that is also a thing in 960, usually, fight for the center. In some other uh, 960 games, Sagar, uh, it is a priority sometimes to block opponent's piece. Let's say knight on h8 or queen on queen in the corner, knight in the corner. You're trying to block it. But the way chess pieces are placed in the starting position, you cannot block any of them. So the only priority you have is fight for the center. That's the only one. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I think, uh, Anish, I would really be interested to see at some point, you trying chess 960. You played, right? Yeah, I played against uh, Wesley So in a match. Um, was very, in very hard. World? He's a very strong Where, player. Which one? 960. In uh, a match in uh, St. Louis. I got invited to 960 tournament only once. Probably with Bishop D7 is that... But you never played the World Championship? But there were... Oh, I played I the qualifier. I played the qualifier. By the way, I got very far. I got very far. I, I beat Rapport. Uh, Georg Meyer, I beat. Um, I beat Eric Hansen. Did you lose to Nordirbeck? Yeah, final. I played the ah. final match against Nordirbeck and it was a very close, tight match. Uh, we went to Armageddon. We went to Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this pawn was hanging. Now he's got only two pawns. We went to Armageddon and uh, I lost to Armageddon. Oh, by the way, now he can do knight d5 and b2 is also. But D6 ah, is hanging. Sorry. Yeah. So now he's got, uh, you see this pawn is blocking, so he's got only, he doesn't have any pawn mass. Only also isolated C, pawns. Like, yeah, you just yeah. get knight c4 and yes. d6 is easy. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it, it's, it's like, it, it's, you know, almost feels like I have compensation for two you, pawns. You, you, even if you had one piece less, exactly. you had compensation, now That's, you have extra piece. Yeah, exactly, exactly what I'm trying to say. And yeah, now I'm forcing a queen trade, collecting an extra, extra horse here. One question was asked, do you think that if Nodirbek was playing in this field, he would have done well? He could have done well. I don't know, would have, he could have easily done well. Yeah, easily. Nodirbek and Gukesh, very similar. Uh, very similar players in some way. Also, the way in which they sit on the board is similar with that mindset. Yeah, of, they, know, have like that, that they have that thing. I think they are maybe inspired by Carlsen, maybe. In what way? In that they behave uh, during tournament like they are weirdos a little bit, 
like you can just be normal you oh, know design. walk around yeah, yeah, yeah it was nice uh walk around um just play and then be normal you know outside tournament but they are during tournament like they are not looking uh, at anyone they're not saying hi properly they're not doing a small talk talk about just you know you, you i see you in hotel say hi how are you doing how was your flight how was the weather outside talk a bit about you know how was your uh, how are your friends doing speak for three minutes say okay good to see you good luck tomorrow i have a nice idea for you novelty i'll crush you tomorrow see you bye bye instead they come okay we're not talking you know they're going like something special okay tournaments going on they don't say hello <gasps> Will you say hello? And after know? the tournament, they no, will no. be different. Uh, yeah, yeah. After tournament finished, oh, now they can be normal. Thank you very much. You can now tell me hello. Oh, thank you. I was waiting all tournament till you tell me hello. Thank you very much. Okay, tell me now how you are doing. How is your family? <laughs> like, uh, I mean, what is this? Seriously, we'll play tournament in two days again. So you can, if you don't want to say hello, never say hello. Just don't say hello then. <laughs> what is this? Seriously, like something special is happening during, during tournament. What now during tournament? Like, you know, during tournament, you don't go to toilet during tournament or what? You don't uh, eat or like everything you do. Like I also... think I think what happens with them or maybe just my thinking is some thought is put in their head by someone saying something and they don't want that to happen. Like, let's say if I meet and I said, hey, how is your uh, uh, studies going? You know, something like that. Yeah. School. And they'll be like, oh my God, school. And then they'll start thinking and they don't want to get that thought in their head at all. That's why I use Twitter because uh, I can write how is your school cookie on Twitter and then yes. <laughs> but some really smart ones they're not even looking on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, but you know you're only really strong not when you push away the thoughts, but when the thoughts can come at you and you can still handle them. That's when you're really wow. strong. That's I the ultimate strength. You are dropping some really deep things today yes, about yes. friendship first, now about uh, thinking Unbelievable. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, so, done, yes? Levy got his knight trapped for content. Or, no, no, just because, okay, he just got it trapped. <laughs> knight b1. And then, no compensation here. This is no compensation at all. h3, final nail, nail in the coffin. So, um, yeah, no, but there, of course. Maybe uh, we, can, we can ask Levy to join, no? Then at yeah. the end, just yeah, yeah, to say bye. Him. Okay, there are some tech issues. Uh, well, we should get Levy so that we can afterwards screenshot his head and use it for thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him to make some facial expressions for thumbnail. Uh. But Anish, where are you going next now? Um, where will we see you in action? Yeah, I'm playing Grand Chess Tour, eh? still. still. Oh, uh, Grand Chess Tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Very there exciting. you will meet Gukesh, actually. Oh, I will, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, my best friend, of course. He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> where you guys will talk about the weather and all. Yeah, yeah. Only me and Gukesh, you know, always. Very, very, like, oh, how are you doing? Oh, by the way, by the way, wait, wait. While you say this, let me just... I have something, you know, I was just searching uh, for like I put Anish in my uh, explorer and I thought, okay, what are the pictures which turn up, right? Like Anish, because I have I cover many events and so on. So I save pictures and all, you know, what came up? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, and no, me and my is, friend Gukesh is, talking about this is life. This almost about the tournament was about to begin. So there, I think you guys are still talking. No, no, but I'm trying to get in their head of these kids. I'm just trying to break them. <laughs> they don't want to talk, I'm going to talk. You don't want to say hi, I say hi. I do the stare down. Hello, how are you doing? Now, how, now, now, you know, handle it. Handle it, deal with it. How was your flight? Yes, how was your flight? Tell me. Yeah, I'm going to crush you. By the way, Chandresh, Chakresh Singh has said wanted to ask Anish if he gets existential thoughts and how he handles them. Do you get it, Anish? Uh, I don't know what it is, so probably not. <laughs> existential thoughts are basically why am I alive or you know what does life, what is life's meaning and stuff like that. Oh, definitely. I mean, life not, but like what is like the meaning of the why am I here on the stream for sure? Like, 
<laughs> Definitely. So let me just, today is super glitching. Oh, he's finally here. He's here, he's here. Levi, you need to turn on your camera. Yeah, yeah. So you would think that Levi on camera, at least after becoming the biggest YouTuber on earth, he would finally know how to turn on camera. Hey guys. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> guys, I've been filming some stuff. And Why it broke. are you not sitting on a chair? Oh no, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm on a chair. But you know, I was in a suit. It oh, was going to be good. a beautiful piece of footage. And then um, the board, yeah, this uh, beautiful board, unfortunately, had some bugs. And, no, but it's um, difficult. This high tech, you know, always the high tech. Is this the, the one they advertise on chess.com now? Is it that one? I'm afraid if I say yes, huh. people will be. Dis I mean, this is the first, literally the first one. It's a like, prototype. Uh, prototype. So. Last night I played a Blitz game mm -hmm. and I was winning, but I lost on time because it's kind of hard to play Blitz on this thing. And today was going pretty well, but uh, then it didn't register your move. And that's my excuse. That's why I hung my night. I was, uh, you know, I was like really stressed. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I mean, you never hang any nights, yeah? From what I remember. No, this is, I think, uh, you know, you can talk to the, you can talk to the stats. I, I think that was the first night I've the ever. First night ever. <laughs> One yeah. night stand, as they call the it. Stack yeah. of books. Yeah. Levy on the on your left, like yeah. there is a huge stack of books. Yes, uh, that's because my tripod is uh, broken, and I needed. <laughs> you see, Levy, I don't so your feel... chair. You are sitting like you are sitting on some kind of baby toilet or something. You know, it's, it's because this is a desk that moves. Oh, oh wow! Wow! Oh, now, wow. now we are impressed. high tech, Levy. Okay, now respect. Oh wow! Yes. Wow. So no, the board the board is actually very cool, um, and it, it's coming out in six months, so it will be functional. Uh, don't take it from me, take it from the, the company that had a very successful first product, but... Um, Anish, what are you doing? Like, how are you going upwards? My desk also moves. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get a desk that moves. Yeah, yeah, I can stand on it. I mean, oh, not on it, next, be, beside, like, stand on it, on, beside it. Oh, it's a standing desk. Okay, yeah, a good show today. Uh, we we talked some uh, candidates thing. Okay, we we gotta wrap up because the time is up. But I want to hear your take. So who is going to win the candidates? Mm, I can show you the. I mean, candidates. I gotta I, no, I, I, I gotta heart. go with Hikaru, right? Okay, he's he gotta go with Hikaru. He gotta go with Hikaru. Fair, fair. At this point, my my real answer is I have no idea. But I did see a nice thing today, which is Hikaru is the only guy who controls his own destiny because he plays the two guys in first place. Ah, so. Oh. No, but the other two, no, but the other two, also, if they win two games, they also control their own destiny, right? You mean, yeah, you can... I suppose, but yes, but you can like win and somebody else has to beat somebody else like uh, Fabiano. Uh, I don't even know. Who no, no, playing. but come on, Levi, like Gukesh, if Gukesh wins all the games from now on, he will win two, then he will win the tiebreak. He will also win. So they... Anish, I stole a talking point I saw on Twitter. It's, I didn't really look too much into it. No, so. but it's like at least if it was Reddit, yeah. I mean, Twitter is full of trash. Yeah, there's not a relevant uh, talking point. They're both, there. they're, they're both, they're both pretty bad. I got in a little trouble yesterday on Reddit. I don't know if you saw. Um, I, uh, I when I interviewed Vidit, I made a joke when I, in the first minute, and I said, you know, candidates always has some drama. Like if you go back, each candidates, there's always some drama. And I and I mentioned how in like the 2018 candidates, there was all this nonsense with Grishuk's piss bottle. Oh yeah. <laughs> which was fake, like that wasn't, a, and he, he clarified, but in the interview with Vidit, I didn't like quite fully emphasize no, that but it was you fake. No, uh, it's a big question is whether Grishuk, he knew what he was doing or not. What did he do, by the way? He was carrying that bottle with like, but like with the, like green tea or whatever, but it, I think he realized full well what it looked like, but he then pretended that he didn't, you know? Or not, or he didn't. So that's the thing. Nobody knows. Like, of course, it was just a tea, but nobody knows if he did that whole thing on purpose or not. Because Grishuk, of course, he's meta. You know, he's uh, he's thinking that. Yeah. So I made a comment like that and was obviously not saying that he carried piss around, but I didn't fully clarify that. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, Reddit was a little upset with me and. Nice. Um, yeah. So, so basically, it was not, not a piece in a bottle, but storm in a cup. Yeah. Or it is. It's not an English impression. <laughs> It's a Russian yeah, I, I, cup, I think. Um, all I know is none of that is happening at this candidate's. Oh, we only have some drama with creaky floors and shoes and stuff. So. Yeah, the tension yeah, is mounting. Okay, so Hikaru. Okay, guys, I'm going with Gukesh. Sagar, your prediction and then we are signing off. 
Yeah, I want to also go with Bukesh. Yeah, you have to, of course. Uh, now you're lucky. Yeah. The other Indians no. are out. <laughs> you have no shock. <laughs> no, the thing is, I'm very happy because when I came to Toronto, I was like, how many rounds can the Indians keep up? Because naturally you have Nepo, uh, you have uh, Nakamura, you have uh, these top guys. But they have kept it up till 13th round now. So it's almost like till the penultimate round, there's yes. interest. No, people are amazing. asking in my chat uh, about Vidit's play. Okay, Vidit played amazing, of course. Uh, he came very close. But okay, sometimes you put everything, you know, you go all in. And then it either falls or falls against you. And basically, he put all in at some point and it, you know, the wrong card came out. And now he's out. So sometimes, yeah, you go all in and then uh, you don't hit. And then, then you are out a little bit earlier, but... The only guy that has not suffered a heartbreak or like a massive turnaround or a huge emotional letdown is Nepo. Multiple candidates in a row. Like Gukesh had this heartbreaking loss to Alireza. Hikaru had some crazy games against uh, Vidit. And, uh, and Nepo just keeps cruising, man. He just like... Yeah. This Nepo game yeah, against Vidit, I was screaming. I was screaming at my TV. No, but of course, <laughs> but it's like it's his plays kind of relative to others is a little more shaky so it can happen any moment yeah it's clear like it's it's in the air he's sort of any moment something can go wrong in his tournament it's clear like it's it's very shaky very very shaky he's going around you know around uh, a loss for many rounds doesn't like he's going around the hole and he never falls in there but he keeps going around it very tricky anish i have a question i know you said you have to go so my yeah. question is kind of putting you on the spot um when I was watching this Vidit game, um, there was the two moments he could have played h5, right? And then he could have played knight takes d5. Yeah. And knight d5 simplifies into this winning endgame, yeah. h5. So to me, h5 was very tough to find. Yes. Especially maybe, yeah, like very tough. I mean, mm -hmm. I was getting very upset actually at people in the chat like, I'm an amateur and I saw h5. Yeah. No, you didn't. Uh, but knight d5 seemed quite findable because he had like seven minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, but he just maybe didn't expect to be winning. Maybe he saw cd5. So. I don't know. Should you expect Vidit no, to but find you know what was like the weird part? Uh, I watched um, the footage afterwards, and after the game, he says, I was winning with H5. He just says it immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He showed it like the first thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And that is, the line is so hard. Yeah, yeah, you walk your king over there. Yeah, and, like, yeah. How did he see that? And when did he see that? That's, by the way, a very bad sign if you see something after the game. Like, it means that you were thinking about the position after the time control, maybe. Like, this is mm -hmm. such a no-go. Like, I, I almost never do that. Uh, and you have to really avoid it because you should really only focus about the upcoming problems. And after the game, you should not be think knowing what you did wrong yeah, normally. I mean, only think about the next move. I don't know when he... Maybe he thought... I don't know when he saw that. But he didn't see the other win. Yeah, it happens very often when you have... Especially when you have limited time, you just take a decision. You cut off the variation too early. And of course, mm. in that line... So it goes like... Bishop takes a3, you have to go king b5... Yeah, and then the guy can play e4. If you take on a5, there's bishop c5, so you have to go c4, a4, c5, and then you, you have an optical kind of illusion thing that maybe you think your pawn queens first, but then after you queen, the other guy queens with a check, and then you get a queen endgame which is winning. So it was kind of a long line. It's like 14 move long or something. I calculated at some point, uh, but it's a very long line. But uh, he's capable of it. But of course, you know, high pressure situations. In high pressure situations, unless uh, like a rook is hanging or something. Uh, People mm. can always make mistakes. And remarkably, he saw well, the first win, he said. Yeah, he's, he just said it. I mean, uh, that, I, that's, I found shocking. How did he see it? It's uh, insane. The line is, the, the move is very not natural, but you have to give up the c4 pawn, then go with the king to e6. It's, and to evaluate that as winning, that's very cool. But yeah, yeah he... it's very hard. Okay, to be fair, of course, okay, if he won that game, he would be uh, in the race, but he would have to win many more games to win the tournament, right? So... Yeah. Okay, it's like... Yeah, I mean, h5, I thought, is completely unnatural. Like, you lose all your pawns. Uh, but yeah, the idea to go hg, king, f5, and black is just losing is kind of crazy. Yeah, but, uh, amazing yeah. he saw king it. king just gets in, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and you go to f7, like f7 even, and then rook h1 is made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. But also, yeah. I asked uh, Nepo about d5. And he said, oh, it's losing? Uh, yeah, okay, I, I don't know. I mean, I just thought I'm winning a piece. So Yes. He he didn't even... No, it's very... It's, it's somewhat yeah, counterintuitive. If, yeah, so line goes e4. Yeah, c4. c4, a4. And then you go c5. Yeah, take, take, and then yeah, you queen. Yeah. 
But actually, I mean, this is... Yeah, and by the way, this you still have to win. It's not so trivial. Yeah, of course, of course. But okay, this he would, of course, uh, manage somehow. But uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard, uh, especially time pressure and the pressure in general. I mean, people make all sorts of mistakes and you make a mistake which is uncharacteristic. So things that you can uh, handle normally, you stop handling. It's just normal. Yeah. Like chess is game played, you know, it's in the brain and the brain... When in pressure situation, it just malfunctions. It's everybody's malfunctions, but uh, one of the players wins eventually. That's how it works. You, you know, Anish Levy, I feel like this tournament kind of fixes Anish's, uh, sorry, uh, with its spot as one of the elite GMs, no? Because he really was there. He was win he beat Nakamura twice. He was winning against Fabi. He pushed Nepo. Like, until now, of course, he is one of the best, but this tournament, he was just was playing at equal level with everyone exactly know? exactly I, I felt that exactly absolutely yep. and uh, uh, if not been for the other Indian players uh, you know it would be like it could have been let's say that it would be that India gets an established uh, absolute top player but uh, now it gets a bunch and he's one of them uh, which is uh, amazing to keep up with these um, youngsters you know uh, it's really amazing, and uh, with all the prep that he he did for the tournament, I'm sure Vidit will show many good performances in the in the coming future. True. That idea that he played in the uh, anti Berlin, like this C6 against Hikaru, did you know it? Uh, no, no, I don't think I knew it. Uh, it's, I mean, it's in a certain direction where I wasn't really going, you know, for a while, uh, but. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the kind of uh, setup that he has prepared for the tournament, of course. Also, his game with Fabi was quite similar yesterday. Yeah, 97, yeah. Yeah, he prepared this, uh, these setups. But uh, against Hikaru, it worked better than against uh, Fabi. Okay, guys, thank you for joining. Cool. It's been great yes. fun. Thank you, Anish. Thank you, Levi, for coming in for the end. And uh, see you soon. Yeah, see you guys. Sagar, are you, are you ending also? Or are you... Gonna bring some A and stream for another four hours. <laughs> anyway, generally last time it was like bye guys, see you, and then suddenly title yeah. Tuesday began. With this yeah, was yeah. playing, and then one thing led to another, and so.